And I think we're live. Welcome to the art class. Uh, we're we're going to go over uh, choosing some paints, colors of which to choose, uh, color paints that is, colors to choose, uh, special effects, of, you know, special effects kind of paints, uh, pro paints versus craft paints, making a chart in your journal, uh, picking out some brushes and other equipment. And I think that yeah, we'll be able to do it for this time. Uh, anyhow, uh, welcome. Um, this is the first uh, first video in this series. Um, first, I'm going to go over uh, choosing some paints. When you when you're painting with acrylic paints or any paints for that matter, um, you definitely want to know something about the paints that you're using and you know what colors to get and that sort of thing. So we'll get into that. Um, in acrylic paints, there's there's different types of paints. There are heavy body paints, like this. Um, there are liquid paints, like this. There are craft paints, like these. Uh, let's see, here's another one. Um, now these are like a medium body paint. These are f called fluid acrylics. Um, I've got a couple different types here. Let me see. Uh, I'll have to see right. Let me see. These are the our fluid acrylics. Uh, I don't think yeah, I can't really hear them, but uh, they're very liquid. Uh, not quite like water. Not like honey. Kind of in between there somewhere. Um, and. Um, and let me see. So yeah, these are the heavy body paints um, for painting, uh, like on canvas and whatnot. This is what you're going to do most is with heavy body. Um, and you can do some texturing and whatnot with these, uh, where you you really can't with the medium body paints. These will actually flatten out. Uh, these will not. Uh, you can actually do some texturing with these if you really want to go big on texture. Um, you don't want to. You don't. You don't really want to use up all your paint doing that. There are mediums you can do with that, and we'll get into that in in another class. But uh, anyway, basically, uh, for painting on canvas, you're going to want to go with some heavy body paint. Um, and um, and they do cost a, you know quite a bit more than say your craft paints or whatever craft paints are okay to for learning and whatnot unless you're doing a lot of texturing then you're going to have to do this oh. um, but um, um, you know there are differences in, in these uh, so definitely want to do that let's first go over color choices when you when you're first getting you know first getting into painting and you haven't bought anything yet and you're like gosh what do I buy um, you probably want to get, get um, a paint, let me see, excuse my hands here, uh, you're probably going to want to get a paint, uh, the basics is a really good, good choice, um, and it's, it's fairly, fairly economical too, uh, and there are, there are others too, um, System 3 is yet another one, let me see, oh, we got these here, um, this is another, uh, fairly heavy body paint, it's kind of in between, this one's kind of in between heavy body and medium. Uh, which is which would be something like like uh, you know the the craft paints like these guys here. So anyhow, um, um, but um, you know they're they're good paints. Um, and and System Three. I mean, I guess you can see the price tag on here. I got it on sale for like three fifty nine. Great deal. I grabbed just about everything they had at that price because that's that's really cheap. Even the five ninety nine was a good price. But uh, yeah, um, some of these are generally quite a bit more. But anyway, um, basics is, is good when you're getting started. There's also uh, Grubmarker's Academy line. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different brands out there. Um, if you're going to go with the Pro Paints, and there are reasons to do that, uh, you might want to go with Golden. Um, and they do have a difference between, like I have a, I have Golden and Heavy Body. I also have Golden and Fluid. And I don't think I have a medium body of theirs, but um, you know these are these are the two that are most common you know, that you'll find at uh, at your art supply store. Um, but uh, don't want to get these unless you're doing airbrushing or um, doing a lot of fluid like dripping and um, and what and things like that. These are these are you know good for certain things, but you know for painting like on canvas, you're really going to want to stick to heavy body acrylics or at least medium body. Um, so let's go into some color things. Yeah, basics. You know, here's here's another basics. Um, 
Uh, generally, um, I'll, I'll, you know, these are these are a couple student grades. I generally get um, the student grade of of the uh, the uh, titanium white because <laughs> if you can see this one, yeah, um, tend to go through uh, titanium white an awful lot. Um, so and and it's not inexpensive. I think this one was about you know, it was about nine dollars for this, um, and I'm sure it, it's probably gone up a little bit since then. But uh, yeah, as you can see, this one's been well loved, well used. Um, so uh, and you're going to go through more titanium white than anything, um, and that's that's you know it's a it's a really opaque white, and it um, and you need it to mix just about anything and everything. So you definitely want to want to get. Um, and then, yeah, this one here, this is like a four ounce uh, or 118 milliliter um, size. And that's a good size to have. This one's about a five ounce. Uh, this one here, I think is a two, I believe. Yeah, that's a two. And uh, yeah, you'll go through go through those pretty quick. And yeah, nine bucks a pop versus this. I think this was about four or five dollars for, for this one. That's uh, four ounces. Um, even though the... the um, professional grade has has more pigment in it uh sometimes i find that you know you, you don't necessarily need all that um you know unless you're really you know you've been painting for a while and whatnot sometimes i need that but uh but not not all the time um so uh and and they do mix well together you can mix you know say the liquitex you know heavy body professionals with uh, their um their basics line and you can mix that with say deco arts fluids uh, you can, you know, you can mix whatever uh, with the craft paints. Even they all play pretty well together. I've, I've only seen one mix that was kind of weird, and it was with a blue. But I think I had a little problem with the blue because uh, there's something about the blue. Uh, there's certain blues, uh, like this one, for instance, um, that uh, when they get cold uh, or freezing, actually, I guess um, I think this one was possibly frozen in shipping. They tend to get lumpy and weird, and they tend to have a problem. And you know, I mean, you can kind of sort of use them, but if you can see how lumpy it is up here on this lid here, then um, you know, it's yeah. I, I can show it to you later, but yeah, um, yeah. Freezing acrylic paint is not a good idea, but I think that might be what happened to this one. You know. Um, I got some in the same shipment that didn't get frozen, I don't think, or they didn't have a problem. But um, I, I also had a really old blue, uh, I believe it was, um, um, I can't remember which blue it was, but uh, I did have an older blue that had some issues and um, same kind of thing, got all lumpy and whatnot. It seems to, for whatever reason, whatever uh, the pigments in the blue or whatnot, or some of the blues anyway, tend to have problems with uh, if they get frozen. Or, like in shipping or something. So it's something to really keep an eye on. But uh, anyway, um, you're definitely going to need some titanium white. Uh, you're going to use this probably two or three times at least more than, than your other your other colors. It's kind of a staple of mixing. It's a really opaque uh, white. There is a, there is a mixing white. Um, you know, um, and you know, there's there's a couple other names for it, but basically it's a mixing white. And this one is not quite as opaque, and it uh, sometimes you don't want it to be totally opaque. Like say you're doing an ocean or something, you really want something that's gonna show a little bit through. You're not gonna have that stark white popping out at you. So this is that's a that one's something to think about. You don't necessarily need it right off, but it's 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 kind of a you know one of those extras you might want to get. So something to think about there. Um, and just to go through the colors real quick, you're definitely, like I said, you're gonna need titanium white. And like, here's like what three different tubes I got. And this one's getting pretty well up too. My grandson uses that quite a bit. Uh, he's been painting too. But uh, you're definitely gonna need some titanium white. You're going to want uh, burnt umber, which is, let me get the browns here. I got some burnt umber and some raw sienna. Um, this is your burnt umber, that's your raw sienna. Um, sometimes in kits they sell like a burnt umber and a burnt sienna, and that that works too. It's kind of nice to have the raw sienna though. Um, you know, so it's just a personal preference thing. Um, it is what it is, um, and you don't necessarily. I mean, if you're looking at price tags, ah, you know, um, you definitely want to. Um, you know, I mean, th these are professional paints. Yes, they do cost quite a bit, but you know, there's good reasons to get them, especially you know for light fastness and whatnot. We'll get into that later. But anyway, you want um, a burnt sienna. Um, or, I'm sorry, a burnt umber. 
in a raw sienna or a burned sienna or both. Um, kind of nice to have both. Um, never hurts. Um, and then in our yellows, we, we, you know, I I go by the um, the uh, the uh, two two colors per per primary method basically, and and then add the browns and the white in. Um, and basically, you're going to have two whites, two reds, and two blues to make up your colors here. So on our yellows, we've got a yellow ochre. Um, another color that's very, very close to this might even be the same thing. It's called yeah, yellow oxide. Um, essentially the same thing, uh, especially when you're when you're getting started. And then there's uh, cadmium um, yellow. This one's actually a light. It's kind. I think it's better to kind of get the medium. I just happen to get the light, so that's what I have here. Um, and uh, you know, I'll go through the other the colors on the other ones, the other paints too. Uh, but the, you know, whether it's Liquitex or Golden or uh, Liquitex Basics, uh, like this this brand here, or you know, say your craft paints. Um, and I, I, I'm finding some of the craft paints now are actually coming in the standardized colors that um, that um, been used by professionals for years and years. Um, I've been using these for about 20 years or. God, more than that, about 30 years, I guess, something like that. Actually, long, a lot longer than that. I don't want to say how long. But, um, <clears throat> and then they also have, um, like, say, a primary yellow, which is, you know, it tries to lean away from the greens, lean lean away from the reds, and, you know, it's supposed to be a spot in the middle. Um, and then you've got, you know, another one that's called Hansa Yellow Medium. It's pretty close to, you know, this is a light, but, you know, if you, I don't know if you can see the color difference there, but it's, you know, it's pretty much the same same thing as say a, a a cad cad medium so um i get to use although this is a liquid and uh that i use for other stuff but sometimes i mix them it just depends you know you can these all play well together so not a problem there but you're gonna want uh yellow ochre yellow oxide uh some some brands call that and then you're gonna want a cad light medium and you might i don't know if you can read that there but it says hue, and a lot of people wonder what that is. Basically, instead of having actual cadmium in there, which if you eat it, it's kind of toxic, although I don't know anybody that's ever eaten any. Um, the cad yellow, uh, you know, any any color, whether it says hue, it just means they're using different pigments in here to get the same color. And although cadmium, you know, if you get the true cadmium, it is a little bit brighter, but then so is lead with white, and I don't think too many people want to put lead in a, in a painting anymore, although... They used to back in the day, and you can see those really vibrant, vibrant whites in certain paintings way back in the day. Uh, that's how they got that was from lead. But uh, anyway, so there's there's your yellows um, and your reds. Um, you want a cad red. Again, this one's light; it just should be medium. But you want a cad red. Uh, let me see if I've got one that looks. Yeah, here's here's a cad red medium. This is a cad red medium hue, and you notice it says hue, that just, yeah, I mean, in hues will cost less than going out and buying the actual cadmium uh, paints. And, you know, cadmium's a little more vibrant, but, uh, you know, when you're, when you're just learning, just starting, get the hue, it costs a lot less, it's not toxic, or not as toxic, and, you know, um, yeah, it's, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna get about the same thing, and, you know, just, just a hand, you know, not a, not a ton of people can really tell a huge amount of difference um, unless you're really, really into looking at artwork, and then, then you might want to go for it. But just be aware that uh, cadmium is kind of toxic. So anyway, but um, yeah. So if you can see, it's pretty close. I mean, this is through a, a, a plastic bottle. It's a little, little bit of opaqueness to it, not a whole lot. But uh, you can see this one's a little darker than this. But uh, anywho, so that's that's what you're looking for there. And then you want a quinacridone magenta or you know, another magenta, but I would get the quinacridone because quinacridone, when you're mixing with other colors, quinacridones have some really neat little surprises in how they mix and colors that pop out that'll just blow your mind. And they're they're actually quite beautiful and there's you can't do it with some of the other magentas, so be aware of that. So you want to get a, a um, you only definitely get the quinacridone magenta. I think that's a really, really good choice to have. Um, <clears throat> you know, and the, you know, um, and let me see. I think craft paint. Oh, I don't have a craft paint one here. That's a magenta. But sometimes you can get a. Uh, qu they have actually quinacridone magenta and craft paint now too, which is great. And then in your blues, we're going to want to get um, like. Um, this is an ultramarine. Um, another one you can get is like a cobalt, or this one's called a true blue. 
actually the true blue is a little bit more like the cerulean blue and they, they are very different and they mix differently too so that is something to think about and then there's like a primary that's kind of in in between these you know this is kind of a purpley blue it's got a little red in it and this one's kind of more got a teeny 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 bit of the yellowish in there but um, you definitely, you know, you need to get the two blues because they don't. And, and if you get the um, Ultramarine um, and Liquitex, and I think some other brands too, you want to get, if it says, that if it's the Ultramarine blue, say, green shade versus the Ultramarine um, red shade, I think it is, um, you want to get the green shade. So uh, if that helps you out there. And then uh, <clears throat> there's really in blue, that's like your sky blue. Um, you want to get you want to get a couple of those. You want to get a couple. Yeah, two blues, two reds, uh, two yellows, and then your raw sienna burnt, uh, burnt umber, and then definitely your white. And you want to get a get a good size tube of white. I mean, if you buy like the little ones, um, I'm not even. I, I forget. You know, I think I just you know picked this up at the local store. I think that's what they had. Um, you're gonna go through a lot of white. So try to find a bigger tube than this and a lot of times you can save money when you buy the bigger tubes too um you know instead of buying like two little tubes um you know costs cost less to get the bigger ones you know per ounce or whatever so you're definitely saving some money there on getting the bigger bigger sizes um you know like the, like this is a this is a four ounce this is twice as much as, as this and because this is basics and isn't the professional grade this wouldn't actually cost less for the bigger tube than 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 this little tube does. I think it, think you can get about two of these tubes for what one of these costs. But um you know that's something to think about too if if money's money's a factor and and for most people I think it is. So um anywho so there's the colors. Um you know I I mentioned the hue, you know if you know if you're just starting out and if, if it's hue and you want to buy the professional grade and or even even the um the liquitex basics and i know there's some other student grades too i don't know if the grumbacher you know this is the academy this is actually a really good paint i actually am really really impressed with this um and there's you know there's a lot of other brands out there but uh you know go see what your local store gets uh has and whatnot and you know some of the professional grades um have you know information on their packaging like this one talks about opacity, it says it's opaque, uh, light fastness is excellent, uh, vehicles, and it's an acrylic polymer emulsion, and pigment is titanium dioxide, and it has a little number here, it's PW, um, PW6, which right here says it's, it's uh, TiO2, which is titanium dioxide, the two, two oxygen mo molecules in there. But anyway, that's, you know, some of them have that information on them. A lot of the more professional paints and the ones that, um, that uh, you know, you'll see in art stores, um, they will have the actual pigment that, in, that is in there. Um, not just for the titanium dioxide for white, but uh, different colors. Like, let me see, this one has... Um, Oh, let me see. Oh, yeah, this one, uh, quinacridone magenta. Uh, hopefully you can see that there. It says PR22. That is an actual, um, it doesn't actually spell out, you know, what the what that is, but you can actually look that up, and it'll tell you exactly what that is. Um, you know, it's a, and it's, you know, it says PR22. It's uh, magenta, it, you know, it's a quinacridone magenta is, is, is the name of the mineral that they use for that to get that really cool, awesome color. It's a beautiful color. One of my favorites, actually. Beautiful, beautiful color. But uh, anyhow, so that's that's pretty much the colors you're going to want. Like I said, you're going to want your, you're going to want your whites. And oh, there's your, well, you just need one. I, these are like three different, three different brands of the, the same color here. So those are your titanium whites. You're going to want, let's see here, what did I do? Okay, here's your browns. You want, to, this is uh, burnt sienna, this is, or burnt umber, I'm sorry. Burnt umber, raw sienna. And um, let me see if I can get that up there where you can see it. Um, and these are, um, and sometimes you can get, a, you know, some kits will come with a raw sienna too. Um, and I'll show you a kit I just bought that's that's got that on there. And then this is the, the uh, quinacridone. Magenta is right there. I think this is an older tube. I think that's why it's got the other, you know, the different labeling on it than, than the other Liquitex uh, things. You know, they're both the professionals, and I'm not sure which came first or second. I think this is the older one, I think. I'm not sure, but I don't know. 
It's been a while since I've had to buy any, so I don't know, but I am kind of due to buy a few more paints. I tend to run out of certain colors. Um, and uh, so that's, that's that. If you are going to do ocean, uh, ocean pictures, when I'll get into some of the extra colors here. If you're going to get into doing ocean pictures and whatnot, uh, this is a great color to have. This is turquoise thalo. It's a thalo turquoise. Um, not, let me see if I can show you. Oh, this is a really beautiful color, too. I really like this. If you're really into ocean scenes and things like that, it's really hard to see. It almost looks black right there. Yeah, you can't really see it. When you mix with white, you know, you'll see what it is. And I'll, I'll have to show you guys that. I'll set that aside here. So after I do the chart, I can show you guys what that looks like. Uh, just for just for fun here. Um, so anyway, so that's your basic colors. Uh, like I said, there are some colors you you may want. Uh, this one is a uh, uh, thalo turquoise. Um, some other companies make like what's called an ocean blue, uh, which is you know the same same kind of thing. Whether it's thalo or not, um, hard to say um, because I haven't looked at all the brands. I know a couple of brands actually do make do make a you know thalo turquoise. Whether it's you know it has if you look the mineral at the minerals. Um, where it says here, um, let's see if you can see that here. Let's see if it'll focus, focus, focus. Here, let me see. There we go. Um, you know, it has PG7, PB15, uh, 15 to 3 ratio, thalo green, BS, uh, thalo blue, GS. So that, that will, t you know, you can actually look up those pigments and tell you exactly what that is. A lot of the professional paints have a very limited amount of, of minerals in them. And the reason is because some minerals don't work well together, some do. So it's something to think about when you're, when you're buying paints. Um, you know, um, on, on craft paints, like, like, you know, say your folk art, uh, ceramic coat's another one. Um... Uh, deco art media um you know they have uh, several different ones this is the liquids but uh, you know there's others out there and then there's um like the system three paints let me see like these um and these i got on a terrific sale that was that was pretty awesome but they don't always say what's on there although these are very well pigmented i was really pretty impressed with these i figured oh i'll get it for artsy craftsy things and whatnot but the um, I've been pretty impressed with the System Threes. You know, I mean, for a student grade, they're they're pretty nice. I actually like them. And the basics, the basics by Liquitex. These, you know, this label here. You, you know, if you've been in an art store, you've probably seen these. Um, and probably the System Threes too. It's a Dale Round Rowney, I think. Um, but uh, you know, they're pretty good brands. Academy's good too. I mean, there's a bunch. You know, there's tons of different brands out there. Um, although these are kind of the more major ones, at least where I live. So um, this is kind of what we get. But uh, I, what, I, what I was saying, though, is the on the craft paints, they generally don't always have, like, they usually don't have the, um, you can look all over and they don't have the uh, pigments listed on there. But the professional paints tend to have them listed on there. And I think they do that because um, once you've worked with paints for quite a while and you get into the uh, formulation and whatnot, and what plays well together and what does not as far as uh, some colors you can mix, um, like say you can you can mix you know certain reds and certain blues or whatever together um and you can you know you could do that really well and it turns out great with the professional paints but then when you when you start getting into some of the more you know the craft kind of paints and stuff sometimes they don't play so well and sometimes you won't really get the colors that you thought you should get out of those and sometimes they kind of turn out kind of muddy but, um, you know, if you're careful and you really look into the colors and you just play around with them and experiment with them, you know, you can get some good results with craft paint. Um, that's just, that's just part of it. So, um, anyhow, um, but, uh, you know, in, like as, as addition things, like I said, the, the thalo turquoise or turquoise thalo, uh, uh, golden mix is, is really a nice one to have if you're doing ocean stuff. And like I said, there's some other different colors out there that some people, or that some, excuse me, some companies make, um, the transparent mixing white, another good one to have if you're doing ocean, if you're doing outdoor scenes, um, forest kind of scenes, things like that. It's good to have and just to have a nice transparent, you know, semi-transparent white. So, you know, in it, in, it will let you see through more of the more of the other colors other than it you know mixing kind of like a like a 
uh, fully opaque uh, titanium white well. So this is a really good one to have too um, for especially outdoor stuff. If you're doing forest thing, forest stuff, uh, forest uh, paintings, um, you know, pine trees, things like that. Hooker's green is a is a nice color to have. Um, you can mix it with other stuff. Um, you know, you can actually look up on on the back of here, and it'll tell you the pigments. Although this one, I think, has its own pigment. This is PG7 and PY110. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that is. It's a yellow and some type of uh, thalo green, I think, and PY110. I don't know exactly what that is, but it's could be it's, well, it's PY. It could be thalo yellow or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm correct on that. Somebody will somebody will correct me. I'm sure. I'm not sure if that's what the key is or not, but there's different there's different letter and number combinations that will tell you what it is, and you could look them up. And I didn't look those up, obviously, but uh, anyhow, but uh, those are some good ones to have. Um, uh, Thalo blue green shade is a is a good one to have if you um, you know if if your brand or, that you're looking at or whatever doesn't have the other blue. Oh, where did the other blue go? Wait a minute. Oh, it's not there. Where did I go with it? Hmm. Anyway, um, but yeah, thalo blue is a good one to have. The thalos are very, 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 very strong pigments, though, and you got to be got to you know think about that when you mix. You mix very little of this uh, to bring it out into a lighter color. So, uh, you know, lighter color or to mix with another color. If you're mixing, this is a really strong color. You want to do go really teeny tiny, so you can even toothpick sometimes just to get it in there with some other stuff. And one of my kitties is running around and has the cat crazies. And she's just jumping around on cat post right now. <laughs> so if you hear that noise in the background, or if you hear a meow or something, then that's that's my cute one. One or several of my kitties running around. So uh, anyhow, so hopefully that will be helpful. Um, let's see here. Uh, you know, and, and there are some alternatives to, you know, some of these, like there's a, um, like uh, when you get into, you know, like, uh, like decor, they have a, a primary set um, that I got of the, of the fluids that I use for other things, so I'm not just painting on canvas, so this is more for paint pours and, you know, airbrushing, things like that, although I haven't done airbrushing before. Um, but uh, they have a, like a primary cyan, a primary uh, magenta, and a primary yellow. And then their um, their uh, cadmium red, uh, which is a medium. You know, if it doesn't say on there that it's light or dark, then it's the medium. And uh, these, you know, these four together, and I go, why two reds? Well, because this one, if you look at it, the cadmium cadmium colors have a yellowish tinge to them. The um, the magenta is more, you know, has a little bluish tinge to it. So if you see them side by side. Um, you can see what I'm talking about there. Let me see if I can get that in the... Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, you can see this one almost looks orange, even though that is a red. Um, and that is... That's the magenta there. And... Uh, but if you... Yeah, if you put it like that, this looks red, this looks orange, at least on, on my end. It does. And, and that's the yellow. That's the cad yellow there. And this is the... Um, that's the primary cyan, so that's pretty neutral blue there. And and they're actually pretty good. Um, in the craft paints, um, you know, like uh, Delta Ceram Coat, uh, which I think I think this is also made by Plaid, I believe. I think it is. And, and they make good stuff. I've had really good good results with their paints. Um, the Ceramic Coat, um, or Ceram Coat, uh, they have, this, this one's just called Red. Nothing else, just Red. That's that's it. Um, that's a good one as far as you know trying to get get close to that primary. Uh, this one's just called True Blue. Uh, this is a folk art one. Um, if you get folk art, they have there are some paints uh, like this one here that has the gold tops. I really like these because these are matte and not glossy, which I really like. If you look, see if I can see that down here without shadowing it. Um, yeah, it says matte, and they really are matte acrylic paint. And I bought a whole bunch and ordered them online. And when I got them, I went, "Oh my gosh, these are matte paints!" And I thought, "Well, that can't be right." So I painted with them, and just you know, did a chart and whatnot, and looked at them like, "Oh my gosh, they really are matte, and they really are beautiful." And you can get some really interesting, awesome results. And you can mix them with the glossies too. And most of them are. If it doesn't say matte, you can almost bet it's probably glossy. But uh, and this is just called medium yellow, and that's that is. That might even be a cad yellow. It just says medium yellow. Um, 
you know, because this is more supposedly craft paints, whatever. But I really like that these are matte. I mean, that is really a neat thing. The ceram coats, I believe, are glossy, if I recall right. But the uh, folk art, these are actually um, the, the folk arts with the the gold tops up here, like this top right here, as opposed to this folk art with the black top. And that's Sylvester. Say hi, Sylvester. Hello. Um, but the ones with the gold tops are, um, these are the matte, matte finish ones. And I've had really good luck with these. I've really, they mix well, they play well. I really like them a lot. They're really wonderful. Um, ceram coats, these are, these are glossy. I know I've used those too. Um, used to paint, uh, um, uh, plaster repairs uh, castings um, and they come out looking like ceramic when you're done they actually turn out really beautiful so anyhow but anyway there's some of the other colors that you know there's you know there's some variants of colors and then you know down the road when you you know after you get your your fun stuff and the colors that kind of go with what you paint then you might want to play with some of these this is called an interference color and interference colors like you might you might see here it's like gold here and kind of silver here well that's yeah, the paint literally if you look at it one direction it it'll change from from a silvery color to like a goldish color and that they're really wonderful but they, in um there's a craft version of interference paints and there's a, there you know there's ones that change from different colors of the craft version uh it's called color shift and those are really fun too um you know those are fun to play with and then there's also um a lot you know a lot of specialty paints like the fluorescence and whatnot too and those are pretty nice to have so uh anywho um so uh that is kind of a nice thing to have um you know um and then there's yeah there's there's interference paints there's metallics there's glitter paints that are wonderful and sometimes for whatever reason the glitter paints tend to be really viscous and they really really take a long time to dry and there's glow in the dark paint and actually glow in the dark pigments as well um, i do some experimenting and whatnot and like get into that um a little bit you know in this class um or maybe not in the base class but maybe down the road we'll see but uh, these are pigments that i that i bought um and these are actually glow in the dark pigments and if they're exposed to light um for you know i don't know if you you know you remember those things you know little printed out things they would have some glow in the dark stuff on them you have to set them out in the sun for a while and you bring them in like oh it glows in the dark you know but that's what these pigments are and they're pretty wonderful to play with too um i'm still playing with those a little bit trying to see if i can't get some into melt into glass so that's that's kind of one of my things and then I, after i had that idea and i looked around looked around uh somebody i think it was last year year before actually came out with glass that apparently somebody did that with and has the they got the minerals in there and they got the you can actually buy glow in the dark glass now that you can um you know that you can melt and fuse together and make make jewelry with and i was going to make some numbers for my brother's house uh for his you know the, so the pizza guy could see <laughs> <laughs> where his address was but uh anyway oh uh, fun stuff fun stuff uh but yeah there's and there's always more stuff coming out you know the, the chemist and the paint factories are always coming out with some neat neat thing or whatnot um yeah i think i mentioned it before um uh, it'll, you know a little bit of differences with say the um the professional quality versus the uh you know say um you know the craft the craft kinds um generally i mean the reason these cost more they're you know the professionals cost more they tend to have a lot more pigment in them which means a lot more minerals and minerals aren't aren't inexpensive um that's that's where a lot of the money is in that um the binders um uh, you know are probably slightly different from company to company and brand to brand and whatnot too but i think the biggest expense and the in the professional paints is is where they, you know, they put the minerals in and, um, you know, and, you know, they do have a lot more pigment in them. That's, that's for sure. And also the, um, you know, one of the things you might run into when you're using craft paints, although, you know, they've gotten a lot better with craft paints, but they, you know, there's, there is some color shift with, with craft paints that you don't get with the pro professional paints and color shift just means you can be painting this gorgeous, beautiful red 
you know, for instance, I don't know if this one does it or not, but uh, there are some colors that definitely do. I think this might be one of them that does. You can paint it, and when it dries, it turns a very different color. Uh, so that's what color shift is. And that's something, you know, to some degree, if, you know, once you learn to work with it, it's okay. But, you know, if you're painting something, you go, oh, that looks so nice. And then you walk away and you come back, it's like, why doesn't it look so nice anymore? Or why doesn't, why does it look so different, you know, or whatever. But uh, that's just something you need to be aware of. Um, and that's one of the reasons you want to do a chart to see because you know you know all paints to some degree are going to have a teeny bit of color shift and a lot of times you can't even tell but um with craft paints there are some craft paints that absolutely you can tell um and then you know there's different brands there's like apple barrel and there's a whole bunch of different ones and um but um uh, anyhow so that hopefully that'll help you out there i mean if you have the money i'd say you know get the professional you know, or or if you're just kind of toying with the ID and you just want to try it out, get some apple barrel paint or get some folk art or something. I know a lot of times on the plaid website where I got my folk art, which is you know, this one right here, with the, the gold tops that have the matte finish, which is really, really cool. I like playing with that. In fact, I'm, I, I've heard there's some professional paints that have matte finish too. And it's like, ooh, I want to play. I can get some of those. But um, the... Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, you, you know, when you, you, you order them, um, uh, I, I ordered a whole bunch. Like I said, I, I didn't realize these were matte when I got them, but, uh, but you know, these have been really good paints. I'm really impressed with that. You know, there's, there's some cheapy brands out there that I'm not so impressed with, but, um, you know, I mean, if you're just, if you're just learning, you know, oh, that's what I was going to say. If you're, if you're just learning, um, apple barrel stuff's fine, you know, get, to get, uh, you know, your primary red, yellow, blue, and, um, and then your, your browns, your, your raw sienna and your burn umber. Um, that's, that's the raw sienna there. Or you might, you might get a, a burn sienna, but it's good to have a, a sienna and a, and a number. Um, and I think they have raw and green. In fact, I know they do. They have raw and burnt of both. So, um, but, um, you know, I tend to go raw, you know, raw sienna, burnt umber. That's what I, oh, here's the burnt umber. Here we go. And there's, there's the burnt umber there. And, you know, so you can see the difference. I mean, this, this one here has got a little reddish tinge. You can actually mix these, but it is so, 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 so nice. Almost imperative, you know, especially if you're in a class, you're trying to keep up with somebody that's doing a video. Um, you know, to really have these, um, you actually can mix up, but I mean, it takes so much time and you're going to waste so much paint just trying to get it just right and so on and so on. It's, it, you know, these are really kind of almost imperative to have. I wouldn't be without them, you know, uh, that's, that's, you know, I wouldn't be without those. And then my two reds, my two blues and my two greens. I, I mean, sorry, reds, blues and yellows. I'm sorry. And then you must have white, must have some titanium white. That's kind of a, that's a given too. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see here. Um, um, you know, when, when you mix sometimes, sometimes you mix, I think I mentioned before, when you, when you uh, mix sometimes the craft, the craft paints, like say you got the same color of blue and the same color of, of yellow, or the, they look the same, but you didn't know what the pigments were in there. Um, and then you mix them and then, you know, you say you mix these and say you got, uh, you know, you mix these and they look like they're, oh, they're about the same color. Yeah, but they may not play the same. And the professional paints will tend to, um, you know, have one result and the craft paints don't always necessarily have that result. Although, you know, they're, they're generally pretty close. Uh, sometimes they can, you know, I've seen a couple of times they can really get, get muddy and weird on you. So, um, you know, uh, that is just just something to uh, to um, think about. Um, and the pro professional paints too tend to be more vibrant, especially on the yellows and reds. Um, it's one thing I really noticed. And then if you really want them super bright and vibrant, you know, go and get the real cad and the real the real uh, you know the real cadmium red and cadmium yellow because um, these can these can you know the real cad is is it, it is really brighter than than the the um, the uh, the hue ones uh, or not the I'm sorry then the um, oh, what is it called the uh, da, 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 da. Um, the ones that that don't yeah I mean well there's CAD oh that's right it is the hue that's right it's you know because it's instead of it being actual cadmium they just have the cadmium hue which isn't quite as bright as in vibrant as say the the um, you know the actual cadmium you know cadmium 
and the actual, uh, you know, cadmium red and cadmium yellow. Those, those, if you get the actual cadmium, they do tend to be a bit more vibrant. And if you're getting, you know, if you've been painting for a while and you're really like, I really want to have that, those flowers pop or whatever, it's really good to have those. So, um, you know, to have the actual cadmium. But then, you know, you are dealing with a bit of toxicity, but then, you know, I don't think too many people eat paint. So, uh, and I, I don't know if it goes through your skin or not, but uh, I mean, it's not like you're sticking your hands on it so much anyway. But I've painted with my fingers and whatnot. It's not a big deal. Um, so uh, let's get on to this. Um, I, I did just get some new paints. I went out and then uh, I kind of saw an ad and I got a great deal on, on these babies. And this is a Arteza 14 Color Premium Paints. Um, I'm not sure if these are professional or not. They did say premium, so I'm guessing maybe they probably are. Uh, these are four ounces. These are like the bigger bigger tubes of the other brands I showed you. Um, although the System 3s, I think, are five or six ounces, I believe. They're, they're pretty large, and I'm going to just steal a deal on those. Um, I think they were changing the packaging or something. I'm not sure what was going on, but I saw the prices and went, holy cow. And I'd always wanted to try them, so I just pretty much bought everything they had that was left. And although there wasn't a ton left, I did get I did get some. I got some metallics and the purple and some other stuff. But uh, I was really happy to find that. Um, and one thing that I that I, I have done with these, let me see if you can see those here. This is what it looks like on the inside of the box. Although the nice little paint paint colors on top of these, although these are these are really dark and yeah, they look black to me too. Um, what I did is I I opened these up and I took my finger and got a little paint on it and went boop 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 on the top. So when I'm looking at the top of them, I'm just not looking at that or that and you cannot tell the difference between these you know see what i'm saying i mean they, even with the paint on there they look kind of black but then then the the tops are black anyway so you know some of the darker colors just aren't going to look as good but um yeah so um anyhow but yeah see here's this is silver and that's a gold there's a white um that's i'm sure that's titanium white yeah that's titanium white and uh, it's Mars black. That's that's not a color unless you're doing like paint pours and like surrealistic, you know, kind of things. I really wouldn't recommend buying black. I mean, you can, but most things that appear to be black are not really black at all. And you know, all blacks have have a uh, tint uh, tint tone, whatever that's that uh, you know that is um, <clears throat> you know has some other colors in it. And you can mix your own, so it's not. Uh, but when you're doing trees and whatnot, and even the shade and whatnot, they don't aren't they aren't black, black, black like just like a black stock out of the thing you, because they get you get light reflection and whatnot from things around them. And this is uh, this is the burn number here. Um, let's see if you can see that. Yeah, that's the burn number there, and I believe that's actually the paint. I don't think that's printed on there, although it might be. I don't know. I guess I'll find out when I get to the bottom of the tube, won't I? But. Uh, Anyhow, that, that's that's the burnt ember, and I believe this is a burnt sienna, I think that came with it, it looks like it. Yeah, that is a burnt sienna, I thought so. So anyway, there's a burnt sienna. And actually, this is kind of a nice little tip. Um, I was kind of surprised, let me see, do they call theirs oxide or ochre? Okay, that's yellow ochre. Like I said, some paint companies, same kind of, looks the same, It's it's got oxide. It actually looks brighter on, on my camera than, than it does on here but uh it kind of looks lighter kind of brighter more yellowish i guess more brighter yellowish than it actually does in person it looks it looks more muddy on you know um but that is what the yellow ochre yellow oxide is and this is oh they just call this lemon yellow but what's nice about these it looks like you know it's 102 and py3 that actually will you know they do on these they actually do have the pigments on here which is nice um and then this one came with a green. This one's called pale green, kind of a bright green. It looks looks more uh, a little bluer and a little faded out on on uh, on my camera. I don't know how it comes out on your end, but um, <clears throat> I don't know. That's just kind of an extra color. Um, I would want to tone this down for any kind of trees or anything. Um, it is a pretty bright green. It's just pale, so that's it is a pretty light colored green, pretty bright. Um, oh, and this is a thalo green. And when you think, I think thalo is usually I'm thinking of like a thalo blue, but uh, this is a thalo green. I was thinking, yeah, you might be able to mix that, mix that up, uh, like with this. Um, might be interesting to see how that with the, this um, 
this turquoise dello from uh, Golden um, is. So that'll be a fun one to look at. Uh, let me see what else is in here. This is uh, ultramarine blue. Yeah, you know, it's just a staple color there. And uh, I think they the pigments on here. I wasn't sure if they had or not. I just got this. And this is a thalo blue. And like I said, the, um, here we go. And the thalo blues, like I said, uh, thalos are very, very strong. When you mix, you got to mix just itty bits with it. Otherwise, it's going to come out way, way dark. Let's see what they gave me. Oh, they gave me a crimson red. And this kind of, gosh, it looks orange on the screen. This is actually more of a bluish red. It doesn't look that, that way on my camera for whatever reason. I may have to work on some color stuff or lighting or something to make these come out a little, a little truer, but doing the best I can right now. Um, and this is scarlet red. This looks more like a cad, cad red kind of, and it says PR. 21. I am not sure what that is, but let me see. A cad red hue has PR9, PR74, and PW6 in that one. So, hmm. I'm not sure where that stands and all that. But uh, anyway, so these are the colors. These are my new colors that I'm going to try out. And then, they, they, you know, I've, I'm kind of impressed with the kit. I mean, they're really to the they really went out to do, you know, they've got the white, which I kind of wish they had done this like an eight ounce because you're going to need it. You're going to have to buy some eventually. Um, but, you know, I'm like, you know, I've got other whites and whatnot. In fact, I've, I've gotten to the point where I'm doing, you know, I'm doing pores and whatnot. I've actually went and bought a can of house paint to do that in white because <laughs> it, it helps. I just, uh, you know, they ask, oh, don't you want this tinted or anything? Nope. Just white. You guys looking at me like, you, you're not going to paint your house? Like, nope. I'm going to paint my canvas with it and mix it with my other paints and uh, and uh, it was pretty funny but uh, anyhow but um, so oh there's some other yeah there's some other fun things too if you go to your local paint store where they do mix house painting um, my local hardware store has these called Tensol and it takes a very 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 little bit of this to in they had like green and this is lamp black and I think I had one more. I think I've got one that's like a red or something. But uh, these are the tints that they use and you, you can't just paint with this because I don't think it would stay on. But uh, you it's for tinting, you know, latex, acrylic paints and whatnot and you can even tint glue with it if you wanted to. But um, and, you know, this stuff is toxic. I need to try to keep this, you know, up and put away, especially when the grandkids are here. But um, this is this is what they tint house paint with. Um, and it, like I said, it takes very, very little bit of this to tint your house paint to make it those nice colors that people like to paint on their walls. So um, anyway, but those are kind of, that's something kind of fun. I'm, I, that, this is my kind of experimental stuff. The other thing that's kind of fun is taking things like this. These are eyeshadows. Um, let me see, Snow White and Sunshine. One's a silver and one's a gold. And uh, you mix those up um, and, you know, with with uh, with the uh, mediums and whatnot and make your own paint. And another thing that I you know, was working with is like, some, you know, some of this like Easter egg dial to, you know, I mean, I'm not expecting these to perform like other things, but just to, you know, just to mess around and journal and play with and, and uh, all right, you know, it's kind of fun. And then like uh, Rit Dye, you know, and this is, you know, they had this on sale, you know, it was marked like 249, but I think it was like, like, you know, 70 for 75 percent off or something. So I got it for just you know, a couple quarters, I think. But uh, you know, you, you can you can take the packets out and you can mix these with with paint mediums like matte medium and whatnot. And uh, I'll get into mediums later. But uh, anyway, it's just I, you know, I, I like to experiment with things. And and then oh, of all things, you know, like uh, food coloring is great. And then like these little packets, these are little Easter egg dive tablets that you get in those little kits and generally after easter the stores have seen enough of easter and they've had so much of it and they just want to get rid of it um they just want to get rid of these a lot of times they give them away or they sell them like you know for just almost nothing but uh, these are little packets of uh you know, you know basically food coloring to you know tablet style um and you can mix that with mediums and to make you know watercolors or whatever you can crush them up and then uh and uh, spray them and whatnot, you know, and just, you know, just have fun with it. I like to do that sort of thing. I kind of like to play around with the chemistry. So it's a lot of fun. But uh, anyhow, well, let's get on to making a chart here. Um, I'm kind of working upside down, so it kind of looks weird when I, my hands are going in this way. Um, and I understand why it looks upside down. Why 
looks upside down because this is this paper here is upside down to me. But uh, anyway, what I've done is I wrote the name of the name of the company right here. Let me see if I can. Oh, I don't think it's good anymore. Okay, I put the name of the company here and which paints that I'm doing here. And I made a square for each each one of those. I just basically took my ruler and uh, let me let me show you the front of this. This is a Canson mixed media paper. And um, here we go. let me show you. This is what I you know. This is kind of a doodle book, and I also I also make charts of the paints. Let me see if I can. Yeah, here's one right here. This is one I did. It's probably to you guys this is uh crowd these are crowd paints that i did and uh we're just playing around uh with those and i've got some other charts in here i just got doodles and just playing around with different stuff here uh, there's a there's a picture i did a while back of kind of like that thing of my mom or whatever and um uh, whatnot just, you know just doodle stuff and on this one i was i was playing around with kind of making starry kind of clouds and whatnot and, you know, just, just uh, sometimes I'm, I'm really, you know, and sometimes I'm trying to see, you know, how paints play together. Like on this one, I was, you know, like, you know, what is this? What do these paints go like? Or what does this go like? And whatnot. So um, it's really good to have a book where you can do that. This is some some um, powdered watercolors. They're called magenta. Um, gosh, what are they called? Magenta something or others. It's made by a company called Magenta um, over in Europe, I believe. And um, whatnot and you know just and this was some some uh, uh you know crayon type things i was using uh, not like kids crayons not wax crayons but a different type and this was some gessos that i was trying out black gesso and you know black gesso here and i did some white gesso there and was trying out uh you know like this is triple, triple thick which is a, a type of medium and this is liquid glass and i was trying to see what the difference was um, but I'm one out over the other. I kind of like one out one over the other. And there's just some doodles and you know, stenciling things I did and some Valentine's Day. You know, just different things. Um, but anyhow, um, so we'll get back to today's chart. But, uh, and I do have other charts elsewhere too. And it's really a good idea to, you know, not only paint out, um, and chart the paints that you have, but also to, um, to try out the different, you know, to see how they mix, not only with, the, you know, with the ones you typically would mix, um, you know, with, you know, like say your titanium white with, with your other colors, but to also mix different colors like your yellows with your blues and your reds with your red with your yellows and your blues with your yellows and then, you know, to try to tone them down, you actually, you know, mix all three, but just a tiny bit of one. So you, you know, you either get a, a mute, you know, a muted green or a muted orange, or, um, you know, your, your muted secondary colors uh, come out that way. But uh, anyway, um, so you want to get a paintbrush, and uh, a lot of times, you know, like for a palette, and you know, you can go out and buy palettes that are. That are you know expensive and they have uh, little locker ones I think they're called that um, that have uh, you know basically it's like a plastic container with a sponge on it and you can you can uh, you can uh, you can put your paint in. it's got a little sponge in the bottom uh, and it uh, it has it has it's kind of like a tupper, you know flat skinny Tupperware container with a little sponge in the bottom and you put a uh, special type of paper over there it's called palette paper and you can put that in there and mix your paints on that so when you're doing a bigger painting it's wonderful because you can you close that up and put it away and then you don't have to deal with the uh, you don't have to deal with the paints drying out that you've mixed and you're say working on a certain color that you're working on in, in a certain area of your painting and you know you know you may not remember exactly how you got there with that color and so you know it's just kind of nice to have, not have to keep remixing remixing until you find like oh i've got it <laughs> after 30 tries or whatever so um anyway i'm gonna keep that fellow uh, turquoise out so i can show you what that looks like because a lot of these paints when you just paint them by themselves you know especially heavily, heavily pigmented ones they when they come out they i mean they almost look like dark or black like like the tops of these guys i mean there's three of them there that look 
then you know these three here actually there's four there's this one this one this one and this one i mean can you really tell the difference on them and i there's actually paint on there from the tubes i put in there and they all pretty much look black but until you mix them with white and lighten those puppies up a little bit then you can really see what they are um, so that makes a really good difference you know re really big difference but uh anyway um uh, you know when a want a decent palette you know go get a stack of foam plates or foam trays i have some foam trays too that i use and sometimes those work out a little better if I'm not mixing a ton of course. Here, I'll show you guys what these look like, too. And, uh, you know, this is what these are like. And they're, they're great. I mean, they're, you can kind of see, I have really, really big hands. I have really big fingers. So um, I think these are about, well, you know, to give you an idea, this is um, 9 by 12, I believe, I think. Is that right? Yeah, 9 by 12. So, yeah, this paper is 9 by 12. So that's like 9 by 6 or so roughly yeah about nine by six the bottom is here all right well it's probably eight by six on the inside of here maybe even seven by six but uh anyway it gives you a pretty good you know pretty good space to do that um you know you can use good old foam paper foam plates anyway use paper plate if you want it's best to have supposed to have one that's white uh, you can also use ceramic um and there's also uh those metal like uh like trays like they used to use in the hospitals in the good old days um that are covered with uh, baked on enamel stuff and those those work really well and they sell them but they're pretty pricey too so if you're just starting out you know go to a thrift store and get a ceramic plate or just you know get a foam plate you know i i use that and it works quite well um so that's what I do. It's good. To, it's also good. I don't think I mentioned that in the description, but it's good to have a squirt bottle too. I just took a squirt bottle from some air freshener I bought and took the label off and rinsed it out, washed it out really good. And so I got me a couple sprayers. I got one for one I pretty much use for watercolors and one I use for for uh, my acrylic paints and, what, and whatnot. And sometimes they, they just get go back and forth or whatever. But uh, anyway, but you know, if you need a palette, you know. Go buy a stack of foam plates and or paper plates or whatever um these are you know if you're going oh my god the environment these are those uh these actually break down um you know they're out, out in, in the elements those actually break down that's a good idea but what it is I, I put the company name here i put what they did again and made a square for each each one and then i left this nice big thing here and maybe i should have written on here this this place this space intentionally left blank uh, we're going to do a little bit of mixing here, and um, we'll do another, and, you know, I'll do a, probably the next class I'll do on mixing, and, you know, how we get different colors, and how we, you know, how we can look at something, and, and go, I want to paint that, but how do I make that color? It's a really, really good practice to get into, is, is trying to do that, because it's, it's not only kind of fun, and it's a, a bit of a challenge sometimes, but it, it, really gets you into getting those colors down and i know some people go oh my gosh i can't draw well you can get around that i can't draw thing and you i think everybody can draw i don't think there's anybody that can't once you you know you learn the tools that are out there and whatnot to, to do that but um i've got some you know these are uh those mats they're actually barbecue mats and they work great for craft stuff you can paint on them and just you know the paint pretty much comes right off and whatnot um but i'm gonna get get a brush here i'm just gonna you know and these you can use too these are wonderful because they're reusable and whatnot um and it, one thing that i've already discovered with these paints uh or tesla ones i'm not real thrilled about the the containers um i kind of like the you know like these containers better although in goldens i don't like the threads on there because you get some paint in those threads it can be really tough to get those off um i really like the goldens um golden's tubes um let me, let me just pop this one off here for you um you know see i mean it, you know like paint's just you know there's a little bit of paint in there or whatever but it's it's not like it's going to get glued on like sometimes the metal ones the, the metal ones that golden a lot of the companies use these ones are you know they can be pretty tough uh, which you can do and you got to be very careful that you don't get get it in your paint just a teeny weeny bit of Vaseline on the edge of that and I do the same thing with my gesso and you can just put a teeny bit just the teeniest little bit on the threads right there um you know because I mean you can see that even some of the sometimes some of the little metal comes out to you know, too a little bit god forbid you get a crossword a little bit but um yeah I got a little piece there but 
you know, you need, you know, that's, that's just something to think about too. If you have arthritis like I do, that can be an issue. So think about that when you're, when you're getting these, you know, when you're buying paints. Um, I really like the Liquitex Dex ones for their, their, their container, their tubes for nothing, you know, if nothing else. But one thing I, you know, and I know I'm kind of griping about the tubes, whatever, but when they, you know, like if you push these and it's got an air bubble in it and you push, it's like, oh, the paint's not coming. It'll go poof and it'll shoot a whole glob of paint out at you. Um, if you, you know, if you've got an air bubble in there and you're, you're pushing it. But uh, basically what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to squirt a little bit out. And i got a brush here. And I'm just going to squirt a little bit out here on my mat. I think you can see that, can't you? Let's see. Oh, yeah, you can see that. There you go. Uh, I'm going to work on getting some better lighting in here. But uh, right now, it is what it is. And, um, yeah, these mats are great because they just wipe that off. And I pretty much put my paints in order. I put, like, my, I, uh, let's see. Well, I'll show you in a second. Anyway, for right now, I'm going to get my little brush wet here. And this is called a flat because it has a flat edge on there, I think. Oh, that's a flat also. Hmm. Anyhow, uh, you want to get your brush a little bit wet. You know, I don't want it soaking, dripping, but, you know, you want it. I'm gonna have you know a little damp on there. This is just a real inexpensive brush I got. Uh, but, uh, we'll get into the brushes uh, and a little bit more too. And then you just like pick the first square. Like you know, I put the metallics first when I get in there. I put those together, and we'll just do that. And sometimes people will put a line through. If I maybe I should do that um, and use um, like a sharpie. To put a line on there and then you can see how opaque the paint is too like how it really is it might tell you it's opaque or that it's not but if you put a black line there and paint over it it will let you know exactly how opaque or not it is because then you'll really see the difference and this one looks like it might not be incredibly opaque but we'll have to see i don't know it seems to be yeah i think i should do that but uh I, I didn't want the more I used to just put like a squiggly line and then I started seeing people doing this really nice neat looking thing with uh, with that so anyhow so that's what I'm doing and uh, yeah, I didn't really need that much but that's okay I'll just grab another brush and start on the next one and one thing that's good to do with your extra paint like this is find something you know, some people put them on, you know, like photo paper or this or that, or paint other kinds of crafts. Like, I'll just take, like, something like a doily or something, and I'll just go, oh, let's put some gold on there. And I'll literally just wipe it up, and then I'll use that in, like, a mixed media project, which is kind of neat. It's like I got some little black paint on there, too. I didn't wipe off from before. But, uh, anyhow, you just go like that, and then you haven't wasted any paint and you, you know, may not look like much now, but you do a bunch more and then maybe put it on a different background, like a black background and you have, maybe get different metallics going on or, you know, fluorescence and metallics or whatever. And you can make some really beautiful stuff with that. Some people actually make jewelry with those stuff. They put in those, um, those little cabochon jewelry things and they, they'll cut it out and, you know, like stick, like literally glue it with a special type of glue to the back of glass. And they'll sandwich, the sandwich, uh, you know, like a swirl paint or something between uh, glass and the and the metal backing, and and they can turn really beautiful. This is the first one for that, but uh, I don't like wasting paint, so it's kind of nice to do that. And you can see here too, you can really see my brush marks because I didn't use a whole lot of water there. If you you know if you want, you can use uh, say flow medium, and you know, uh, or even water to some degree. You don't want to overwater your your paint, or it actually can can peel off down the road. But uh, and you don't want to do that. So anyway, here's a little bit of silver, and I'm sure I'll have a little extra of that too. I'm just I'm just painting this one little square here. But we're not going to be done with it. I mean, I, I really probably should use a palette for this instead of just doing it on here. But, uh, and, you know, you can use you can use some water and everybody's like, well, how much is too much? Well, a lot of paint manufacturers say, you know, between 25-30% water, like one part water, three parts paint. Um, that's, you know, about as far as you should go. Some people say you can take it up to 50%. I wouldn't recommend that. I would go by the manufacturer's recommendations um, as far as that goes. So, uh, anyhow, so, uh, 
what I'm doing is I'm painting in here our color chart to see what these colors look like on this white paper. Oh, I'm just going to get a pen and draw a slash mark through there. There we go. But, uh, now if I overlap a little bit here, I'll be able to see there. And I can put an eeny bit more water in there. Just maybe a drop there would be good. But, you know, but whenever I get new paints, I really try in there okay I really try and this is kind of a cheap brush but I'm, I'm just you know it's just it is what it is I don't think it's been used before either it may not be such a cheap brush actually the brushes aren't yeah uh, these are these brushes are uh, bristle I believe and um, I just needed to get some brushes and wanted something that I could do real quick and went on they had a sale on them so I thought yeah I could do that. I mean, I really, really like the uh, the hair brushes. In fact, I have some hair brushes that I've had for a little over 40 years. And, um, yeah, they do last that long if you take care of them. I also have some that uh, I had some that I literally just tossed that were a lot younger than that. Um, just because they just weren't taken care of or whatever and whatnot. If you, if you do... Uh, God forbid for, you know, put your brush down, the phone rings, whatever, and, um, you know, there's an emergency, or you just get distracted, whatever, and your paint dries on your paintbrush, do not throw it away. Uh, a lot of times you can take alcohol and uh, soak your brushes in alcohol. I've got a couple of them in there now. Uh, and uh, sometimes you can get it out, so I don't think all is lost. I mean, it might be, but, you know, it's worth a try. It's worth putting some, uh, it's really worth putting a little effort into it and trying to save your brushes. Because if you, if you go out and buy really nice brushes, you, know, you, can, you can spend a lot of money on them. And it's, it's not something you just want to throw away. So it's kind of important to, uh, important to, uh, to uh, try to make them last. Um, no, it's been, you know, because I have a brush that I was given for my birthday many years ago. My daughter gave it to me. And at the time, I think that brush was about $120-something, I believe. Um, and today, I think it's it's still, I think, about $30 or $40. Okay, I'm not going to do the white here because I already did that earlier. Let's just, you know, see how it come out. Um, but I am going to get... Um, I am going to get a Sharpie in the lines there and let that dry out for a second. So, um, I'm going to do that. So, we've got a black line there. We can see, you know, so far, I mean, that, I'm really pleased with that gold. That is really a nice gold. Um, let me get my roller here. It's, uh, that gold is, is actually quite, quite beautiful. I'm actually pretty darn impressed with that. That is really kind of nice. There we go. I'm going to do that. I don't want to put put my ruler up in there because that's still wet obviously and I'll just do the ones down this way and I know I'm upside down to you so this probably looks a little bit weird but uh, I do want to uh, get these lined over and I'm not going to paint just half I'm going to paint right over this line here and that way I can see how opaque and the ones that the paints that really tend to show through or like you know like yellow specifically uh white might too you know i think i'm actually gonna i think i'm actually gonna paint white over that again and i think i am gonna do it with the line there because i really want to see how pigmented that titanium white is there that would be kind of nice to know i'm gonna scoot this up a little bit i hope you can still see i just want to get these lines put in there i'll check it in a second and uh I'm just going to put these lines in here. Woo, that one's pretty... Yeah, I might have to wait for the others. The other two. Let me see. Oh, I'm still there, I guess. Okay, I'm still framed, so that's good. But, uh, here we go. I'm going to let that dry out. And the reason you can do this with uh, Sharpies is because they're alcohol-based markers. And uh, the alcohol goes away, but, in the, you know, they're not going to... The, um... The, uh... The binders in the acrylic paint are not going to break down, um, you know, with like water, and so, so that should uh, it should um, have some, uh, you know, the the 
the alcohol markers, like, you know, like the um, Sharpies and, you know, actually, I don't know if they use a Sharpie or I got, a, I got some alcohol markers down at the, at the uh, hardware store the other day for like a dollar fifty. I was kind of excited, like, oh, we'll see, they're probably garbage, but yeah, for a buck fifty, I'll check them out. And um, so far, they seem to be as good as Sharpies. <laughs> I was pretty, pretty amazed. You know, I don't know how much ink they have in them or whatever, but uh, we'll have to see. Um, and one thing, one thing that you might want to think of when you're doing when you're doing a chart is, you know, try to do the white first. I just did the metallics, and I've got a couple brushes going, so I've got plenty of I got plenty of time and whatnot to uh, rinse and whatnot. And I've got a number of brushes here. I've got an abundance of brushes here, so I'm I'm just fine. I'm gonna grab a smaller one here, but it is good, you know. And one thing about the thallo glues uh, that I didn't mention, I don't think. Uh, they will stain natural brushes. You know that is absolutely stained. It's it's not going to rinse out. It's not going to come out. Um, which you know, especially if you're doing a white uh, chart with a white, you definitely don't want to get a blue mixed in with your white. But yeah, it's it's a good idea to to do your whites first, white and light colors, your white and your yellow and this and that, whatever. Um, it's a very good idea to do that because then you're you're not guessing like wow did I you know did that white look different because I had some blue in there or what? Uh, another thing you want to do too when you're doing a chart make sure you got plenty of very fresh clean water um, and change it often. Um, when you you know I I just use a cup for for mine. Let me show you. It's just like a is it a glad cup or whatever and I use it until it's it's pretty icky looking and some I I used the, the one I just tossed um it actually cracked but the one I just tossed I think I'd use that one for I don't know about three years and it finally it finally had a had a bit of a meltdown. So uh anyway, so we're gonna see right here how this how this weight comes out here. I'm gonna get a little bit more water in there. You know, um and that's one thing with craft paints, it's almost like they've already mixed the water in for you. So that's something to think about too. Um, I mean, it's not really that that way. I mean, there's a little bit more to it, actually quite a bit more to it than that. But, uh, you know, when you're painting on canvas, you kind of, you know, if you really want to, you know, want to get some texture in there and whatnot, you really want to have that, that professional paint. It really makes a difference and the colors are more vibrant and whatnot. You know, you really get into it, and you know, if you're just doing it every day, whatever. But see, this it's like, yeah, that's that's not quite as opaque as a professional. I should, oh, I should get a professional thing on here. I mean, I did kind of water this down a little bit, but I'm going to go over it one more time without so much water, and that might have been my bad. So let's see. But if you really water it down, yeah, you can see that line right here. You can see that right through it. So let's try to let me see. I'll wipe this off on my on my doily thing here. We'll uh, do that real quick. You know, it does seem to cover up on there. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's see how this goes. I'm just going to put this paint over here. That's a nice way to get rid of it. And you know, it's kind of cool too because, you know, you know, you know, after you do this for a while, at first it's like, oh, it just looks like a mess. But, you know, there's a saying, and I've heard a number of people say it, um, that, uh, you know, there's always that ugly stage of, a, of an acrylic painting or, or, you know, like a, or even a, um, like a mixed media project or whatnot. I don't know how many times I've just looked at what I was doing and, you know, I'd do like a, a mixed media, a, you know, like, like craft along, art along uh, thing online and just look at what I was doing and think, God, that looks terrible. I go, oh, like, what am I doing here, you know? And, and they're fun to do because you push your limits and you see what your what your art materials can do. Um, and it's really kind of fun too. I like, I like joining in on those. There's quite a few of them online. But I like there's uh, uh, Pink Poodle Crafts, um, there's the art bar, there's, you know, there's, there's um, and then like to paint, there's, there's like cinnamon, uh, cinnamon, Tuni and her mom, um, gosh, I, I mean, but anyway, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people out there that do that. Yeah, Ginger Cook, she's, she's wonderful. I like her a lot. So the next one's black. I'm going to leave that one for now. So I'm going to go back to the white. Let's go back to the white and we'll, we'll just push that out and see if we can't get it to be a little more opaque without so much water. My guess is it's probably going to cover. I don't, it, you know, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. 
Uh, one thing you want to do too is, you know, dab, dab, you know, most of the water off there. You want your brush a little wet, you know, you feel it, it feels kind of damp, but you don't want it like drippy, sopping wet. Um, unless you're really trying to add a lot of water in, you know, I mean, this isn't water clutch. Well, let's see how that goes. Wow, you know what? It's not, it really isn't. It, it is not that opaque. I mean, it, it's taken quite a bit to put that on there. So yeah, I don't, I don't believe this is, this, um, you know, and the, and the paper's going to lump up a little bit just because it's wet, whatever, and you're, you know, doing one little spot. But yeah, I can still see that line through there. I'm not sure if you can on your end, but this, you can absolutely see that line there. And that's one thing in the difference between craft paints and uh, and professional paints, too, is, uh, you know, a lot of times I know there's people that are painting stuff with craft paints and they're having to paint the same thing over like three, four, or five times so everybody else has moved on. They're having the professional paints. Um, and it's because with professional paints, you know, you sometimes you can just go like one swoop. So it looks like this might be a might be a um, less pigmented one than um, than some of the others that I've got. But, uh, well, that's kind of a surprise. I, I kind of really expected that to cover that up. Hmm. And it's taken me, like, what, this is a third coat? And you know what? Just even not having the water in there, it doesn't. it's not making really a big difference at all. I mean, I am picking up a teeny bit of that blue from the edge of there, but, I mean, I can actually see the... Uh, like, yeah, so that's a little bit water soluble, I guess, the uh, ink is, but I can see, really see the line there. So, um, and then I'll show you, I'll get, uh, let me get, get my, uh, professional Lipitex here, and, yeah, okay, that's a transparent. Uh, let me see, let me get, uh, where is my, where is my squishy gel? I know I've got it here, let's see, I'm gonna grab my, Oh, here we go. There it is. Yeah, here's a tube. Just to show you the difference uh, between this this white and the professional grade. Okay, this is the Arteza. So this may be a student grade paint. I mean, so far, I mean, the, the gold looks wonderful. I'm really, I'm impressed with the gold. The white, not so much. But see, there's there's the Liquitex uh, here. I'll put that back in there and. Um, let me show you the difference with the Liquitex. Here, here we go. And I'll just, I'll do it on something else here because I need, oh, you know what? I may have to let the pin dry for a minute here. Well, I'm going to let that sit there because that's a Liquitex. And I'm going to, I'll put a line on another piece of paper here. Let me see, where's that black marker? There we go. I'm gonna put a line there. Yeah, this, this is those cheapy markers. <laughs> this is permanent markers, Max Max Force or whatever. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, these might get be getting soaked up through there, but I can I can even through the paint. Um, I mean, I know there's some blue soaking up from the edges, so it's clear this is like a bluish black or whatever. But you know, I'm just gonna put a mark up here. There we go. Now let that. I'll just paint over this this little corner right here. You can see that. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, I'm gonna paint over that little corner there and in a minute. I'll let it dry for a second. But uh, yeah, yeah, they shouldn't. In my in my humble opinion, shouldn't do that. Okay, the next color here that's black. So I'm not gonna paint it right away. Let's see here. And I'm gonna leave that one open, and then I'll do the burn number, which will be the next one. And I'm gonna let let that. Wait, oh, you know, let me do the white. This should be dried off. It just takes a second for this to dry. So let's see how this does. This is a professional. Oh, yeah, much better coverage there. There we go. And actually, it's kind of bleeding into this a little bit. But it's, I mean, it really does cover my tomorrow. You can see the difference here. Oh, yeah. So I don't know. That, that might be a professional grade. I mean, I can, you know, I mean, I... It took, it actually took a couple coats of that for that too, so it could just be the pen too. But, um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. But, uh, anyway, let me change the brushes here. I'll swap that one out and I'm going to switch over to the burnt umber. That one will be black, but not right away because I don't want to use black on a brush and then have to go to a lighter color and that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I have these kind of lined up. I guess I don't, but eh, I'll just make sure I rinse really good. I've got extra brushes, and I've got tons of extra brushes, so I'm going to go there. So this is our burnt umber here. Oh, another thing you're going to want to do, too, is you're going to want to um, 
you know, write down what these are. Um, you know, not just like, oh, here they are. No, but you can all write down what they are. Yeah, see, that really covers really well. I mean, it is a darker color and whatnot. But, I mean, that covers fairly well, but I was kind of surprised. I'm surprised that the professional didn't just knock it out in one, one swipe there. But I think there's something in that pen that might be bleeding through a little bit. It's got a little bit of water solubility to it. But uh, most of the alcohol markers, or a lot of them anyway, uh, won't do that. I just kind of grabbed one and didn't really think about it at the time. And I'm going to go over into the little black space there just a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, you can see how... Well, that looks that looks pretty good actually. Uh, here, let me use my doily thing to wipe up the round. Although I'm not gonna, I'm really not gonna wipe up the white there. At least not yet. Eh, maybe I will. But, you know, I mean, the, the doily is white anyway, so it's not like it's gonna do a whole lot to it or whatnot. But uh, yeah, and like I said, it looks like a hot mess right now. But. Sometimes it comes out looking better, and sometimes it doesn't. If it does, if it turns out you don't like it, eh, you know, way or or whatnot. But you know, usually, usually after you do a bunch of different layers and colors and whatnot, you know, um, you'll come out with something that looks pretty decent. And I'm gonna put my little paper towel on here and get a little bit wet and wipe this, wipe this up. It must take a second. And it does leave a little bit because of the is in it. Well, oh, but well, that's not that big a thing. I mean, it's not like there's a ton of stuff in there. You can just wipe these up like this. These are, again, are those barbecue mats. These black things, these are those barbecue mats that you can get online. They are in the store or whatever. Um, but they're, they're actually quite nice to have. Um, and they're great. You can use this as a palette too. You don't have to use like a foam or whatever. And you can reuse these over and over and over again like, like forever. Okay, this color here. This is our burnt sienna, and um, to show you a difference, let me get the raw sienna, you know, like, you know the, uh, the professional grade. This just came with a kit, so that's what I got. Yeah, so that's the burnt sienna. Give you an idea so you can really see what the difference is. Oh, wow, that looks on there good. Um, oh, there we go, I got it. All right. This is what the raw sienna looks like. It's like lighter, you know, that's raw sienna, that's burnt sienna. So, to give you an idea, that's what, this is what the raw sienna looks like. That's the burnt sienna. So, you know, let you see. So, I mean, these are, these colors, both of them are really nice to have. Um, could you mix them, like, every single time? It would be so crazy to have to mix those, because that's, you know, especially because usually when you're doing browns, you're using a bigger area, like, say, the side of an old barn, or, or say, a horse, or whatever, and, you know, you're, you know, um, and not only that, you use these colors to tone down other colors, like, this has a bit of reddish in it. You can use that to tone down, you know, your greens, like, really well. Anyway, it's like, why, you know, why would we put, like, a reddish color in green, you know, isn't that going to make, like, a brown, you know, um, yeah, but if you just put a teeny bit of it in there, you can tone it down and, uh, and make it, you know, from this really bright, you know, like, nothing in nature looks like that, pretty much, to a really beautiful, like, foresty green or, say, an army green or, you know, whatever, just something to tone it down a little bit. So, anyway, here's our burnt... And that's the raw. The raw is the tan looking one, and the burnt sienna is the reddish looking one. But, uh, yeah, I mean, these paints, I mean, gosh, for the price, this was a really good deal. I think this whole set it was a set of 14 from Arteza, um, 14 four ounce paints. And I think it was like thirty dollars or something. Thirty, uh, thirty. You know, I think it was thirty-five or something, or you know, it was under forty bucks kind of, for the whole thing, which is really quite remarkable. Um, so, um, you know, I figure you know, probably less than four dollars a thing, so like a dollar an ounce for for uh, decent quality paint. So, you know, I'm not worried about brush strokes in here. By the way, I'm just trying to get the paint on there to see it. That's in one of the colors. And what I will do is I'll write the colors up here and down here and what they are. And I could have left a space between them or whatever, but yeah, that's all right. I, you know, I, I try to do it fairly consistently. I think on most of them I have less spaces. I just kind of wasn't thinking about it. But uh, it, you want to do charts that you understand. That's what's so important, you know, is 
you know, it doesn't matter much if other people can understand it unless you're taking a, you know, a class at, say, a college or high school or whatever, um, because your teacher wants to know that you know what you're doing there. Um, but, uh, you know, when you're doing this for yourself, you know, what matters is, do you understand it? Do you, do you have a method to your madness? Do you know, you know, if you wanted to look up, say, you know, what does this particular burnt sienna look like? Um, does it look like another burnt sienna? Sometimes they can be different. Sometimes they can be very different. And that's just the way, the way it is. But, um, you know, it is good to be able to go back and look and say, oh, that's what that looks like. And it does make a difference, too. No, that, that one's pretty wet. That one's kind of globby. The silver, man, not too happy with the gold I really liked. That was actually a very nice gold. So we got the burnt amber, burnt sienna. Now we're going to go to like yellow ochre or yellow oxide. Oh, oh, yellow ochre. Okay. So this is yellow ochre. It kind of looks almost like a brownish. Uh, here, hopefully it will come out a little bit more accurate on the screen. I remember right. I think this was one of, at least the other yellow ochre I have. Different brand. Uh, a little bit different. Let's see if you can even see that. No, you can't really see it there. Let me see if I can scoot it over. Oh, you know, what? I'm going to take this. I'm going to take the tube up. Let's see. There we go. Right there. Uh, that's the yellow ochre. Like I said, it kind of looks like a brown. It's kind of like, oh, it's like yellow got muddy. You know, it's like here's, here's a nice bright shiny yellow. Well, this one's called lemon yellow. And I'm guessing it's, it's, you know, it's probably not, um, exactly, you know, it's, it, well, it's not, it's not the, um, it's not a cad yellow, a cadmium yellow, but it is a nice bright yellow. But then, you know, whoa, you know, that's the yellow ochre or and some companies, you know, call it a color like that, yellow oxide. And sometimes, and they do have, I believe there's a difference in the pigments, but they're so very close and they're, um, they're so close in color. It's almost like, you know, oh gosh, but you know, but there are differences, you know, not people go, well, what does it matter? Cause it looks the same color. It really, really does matter when you're mixing colors because some of those minerals get in there and they'll change each other. Uh, like, you know, like a, I mentioned before, the quinacridone magenta. There's a reason you get quinacridone magenta, and it's because that that is a... That color is, you know, it's not just the color of the paint, it's when you mix it with other colors, what does it do? And, it, and there are some chemical changes that go on, apparently, or at least light reflective-wise. I don't know if there's actually interactions chemically going on, but there are definitely... Uh, things that go on as far as our eyes being able to see things and the color that it, it reflects, which is actually the color that we see, and it does make a big difference um, for different things here. So, so uh, it really makes a difference. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, this is 14. Why did I think this was 16? Hmm. Well, I made this for 16, apparently, and there's 14 in here. I don't know why I did that, but I did. So I'm going to have an extra square here and there, I guess. And because the way they're in the box, they're doubled up in the box, I'm just going to leave these these two on this side blank. So anyway, yeah, this, this yellow ochre seems, I don't know, maybe that's just me. Or maybe it is that pen, I don't know. Well, it's been drying longer now, so that pen shouldn't be bleeding through too much. And you can see it bled through a little bit there. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but around the white, there's a little bit of bleed there. Not a lot, but it's enough that uh, I didn't quite get enough here. Um, no, I think I got too much. But, uh, but uh, you know, if you're wondering what these are like, these are like, uh, you know, if you've got kids around, those little toddler, um, little uh, squish and suck up your, your, your lunch or snack or whatever, like a straw. That's what these, these containers are like. And, um, I'm not really fond of them for paints. I think they're, I don't know, I would think that, that uh, they would have used something a little bit different. I mean, I'm just, I, I really like, you know, I think I said it before, but I really like these Liquitex, um, these, uh, these tops, these lids are great, and because of the plastic that it's made out of, it you know the paint's not going to get stuck in those in the uh, even if it dries out in the grooves, like you just turn it and it'll just flake right off because of the type of plastic this is. I think it's uh, I think it's a high density 
polyethylene or something like that. So whatever it is, I know it uh, it keeps the uh, it keeps the stuff away. So uh, so uh, it is a nice thing to have there. Let's see here. I'm just gonna take it easy here and not be worried about how I'm doing this. I just wanna just wanna make a box and I'm just you know I'm not even worried about the brush size too much. I'm just grabbing a brush here and there and whatever. And it's a little sloppy and a little slow, but eh, whatever. That's good. Anyway, there's your yellow oxide. Let's see if that, how that's coming out on camera there. Let's see if I can move it closer a little bit so you guys can see. I have to tweak it a little bit to get it over there. You guys, there we go. That's the yellow ochre right there by my thumb. But um, that's actually that actually covered pretty nicely. That's pretty amazing. Okay. Well, that's good. And then once again, I'll just take rest of this yellow ochre and there's snow it's mixing as it goes oh my goodness we mix colors ah <laughs> anyway yeah i mean it's you know i mean you can start doing this the next thing you know we got a flower going and you know a flower inside a flower you know who knows you know i mean you can you can get some pretty cool things going on when you're uh when you start uh apologize for the shadow over here it's just like i said i don't have the best lighting here i'm trying to I'm actually in my kitchen i'm trying to get this going and whatnot so uh Anyway, and you know, you can like you can kind of dry brush it and you can get some cool effects like that. And you know, whatever you can see, like the because these have little roses, there's little roses on here. It's kind of fun to do that, you know. And it is nice to use a paint rather than just you know, wiping it all up and throwing it away. I kind of like to kind of like to save as much of it as possible because you know, it's and not only that, you can make really cool things with with uh, some of these and every now and then something will just pop out and surprise you you know and, and uh you get like a background kind of thing going and you can paint something else on top of it in the background just looks really cool because you get all these different colors going on there although when you're doing composition and whatnot you know you, you're going to tend to want to want to do the you know keep the same kind of colors going on and whatnot oh let's see i'm gonna grab another brush because my water is getting pretty ripple is it over there so i'm just kind of i'm grabbing random brushes and whatnot. okay oh here we go all righty i'm gonna i'm gonna do these backwards here i'm gonna put out this yellow i'm not sure what pigments I think I read it off before. This is uh, so PY3. I'm not sure what that is. I'd have to look that up. But, uh, you know, the, I do like that, you know, I mean, the, excuse me to kind of do a review here, but I do like that uh, Arte's, um, no matter price, is pretty darn decent for what you're getting. But uh, I do like that they put the, um, the uh, that's, that's the uh, pigment there. Let's see. Oh, come on. Let's see if I can get the Got my hand over. Sorry, I'm gonna try to get the get the camera to uh, focus there. Let's see if I can get it to do that. No, it's kind of blurry, but anyway, it says PY3 here, and it has a plus. Well, that's that's the pigment. The plus plus plus. I believe you know. I believe that is the. Um, let's see, there's the opaqueness, or that might be the light fastness. I'm not sure. And then, oh, well, maybe that's the opaqueness because it's like half and half there. It says 102. I'm not sure what that is. I'm gonna have to look that up or talk to the company. If you ever have any questions about a paint, um, don't hesitate. You know, call the companies. Um, like Golden has Golden and Liquitex too. Um, you know, they have people that can, that, you know, you can call. They have, like, a hotline thing you can call any day of the week, pretty much, you know, well, Monday through Friday business hours anyway. And they, um, they will talk to you. Yeah, wow, look at this yellow. I mean, and that's to be expected. I mean, yellows are much more transparent because of the pigment used and whatnot. You are going to find that is true across the board. Professional paints are not. That's just the way it goes with, with, uh, yellows and sometimes you know there's some reds too that are really transparent but that's that's to be expected but this one's really really transparent so it's pretty well but uh and um like i said i'm just you know i just got a great deal on these paints i thought you know i'm gonna try i'll try them what the heck you know it's good to try out new stuff from now from time to time and like i said it was only like 30 something dollars and from what i can tell so far i mean they seem to be pretty darn decent paints so they, they seem to be be in the realm of the good stuff, you know, and 
And, uh, you know, one thing that was surprising, of all things, uh, was, um, I remember, I believe it was Cinnamon Cooney, I think, she's the archer on YouTube, she did um, a test with different types of yellows, different, or different brands of yellows. Uh, gosh, I think it's been a couple years, you know, you know, three or four years ago now. And she, um discovered that of all things one of the craft paints was better pigmented than even the professional paints which i thought was rather interesting so um you know that was a really interesting one i believe you know, i forget i think and i think it was the folk art i believe was the one that she used for them she put it up against golden let me see she had golden and liquitex and some other ones she did she did opaque, opaqueness test on a few different brands of paint different colors and whatnot and that was one of the ones she did and i was fiberglass that was one of the things that got me trying their paints just when i saw that i thought wow i gotta check that out and i bought it i bought their paints and you know i've in fact i bought a bunch of their paints uh, they had a sale and so much percent off your whole order kind of thing or whatever and i just decided to do it and I think that's a good time to buy paints, especially, you know, I mean, you know, for anybody. I mean, it's good to, good to save some money. But uh, I happened to hit a sale, you know, and I remember, I remember seeing that, and I kept checking. I thought, yeah, you know, they'll have to go on sale sometime. They got a sale, and and I just decided, yeah, it's time. I got to do this. So I ordered them, and I, you know, I was very, and, and like I said, the, the one with the, uh, is, um, the folk art things with the gold tops these are the ones that are matte and that was that was a surprise because i didn't even see that online i was just excited I figured, okay i guess it's all you know i didn't even think about whether it was matte or matte or glossy and it just happened to be what it happened to be so i was i was pretty happy about that but uh there we go um yeah see that how that green came out i don't know if you can see that i know it's not the best this picture here and i'm I'm just trying to get this set up and trying to, you know, get things going. I'm, you know, I really want to, you know, I just wanted to set this up and get the class started, get get people started on their on their stuff. Um, and I meant to do it earlier this year, but there, you know, I had some some personal things going on that I couldn't do it. But uh, I've been meaning to do this, you know, set up this channel for a long time, and I just thought, okay, now now's the time. So uh, anyway. Um, yeah, that's a, yeah, see see how much more coverage is in the green than than the yellow. But you know, the, you know, don't just go, oh my gosh, the, that paint's got to be terrible because the yellow, um, you know, because the yellow's the yellow's uh, more transparent than the other colors. That is true of every paint brand. That you know, the yellows are just yellows are you know, especially the you know the light yellows, um, like the, even the cadmium yellow, even a, a well, pigment cad cadmium yellow will actually be more transparent than other colors. That's just part of it. But you see, I don't know if you can tell how how um, how bright, bright, bright green that is there. I mean, that's a kind of green. Oh, there you go. That's a kind of green right here um, that I would want to tone down. And you would tone it down with this one right above it or this one right here. And you mix a little bit of that in there because this is, you know, this up here tends to be a reddish. And this actually has a little bit too. Whoops, I'm getting paint everywhere. But, um, but I, you know, to tone this green down, um, if I can, I can show you that real quick. Let me see. Let's just, I'll just do some right here. I'll do some right here. Because the burnt sienna, and actually sienna in general, has, has that reddish tinge in here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put my brush down right there. And I'll get to you. I don't really want much. Gosh, I'd be, let me see. Oh, I had some toothpicks here a little bit ago. And I, oh, they're there. I found them. Yeah, it's good to keep toothpicks and popsicle sticks and craft sticks and things like that around when you're painting because they really come in handy. They're not absolute necessity, but uh, see, I'm just going to take a little bit of that. Just took a little bit out like that. Just There we go. Paint a bit on there. And I'm going to mix them on here. I'll put a teeny bit on there. Let's see, and I'll keep that around in case we need to use some more. And it doesn't take much. See, that's, you know, I'm kind of picking it up on that brush there. And that brush is a little bit over a quarter inch. 
Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, a little bit over corners, but you can see there's just a little bit there on that brush. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix this in here and take it down. And there we go. But uh, I don't know if you can, see, oh, you can't see what I'm doing over here. But uh, anyway, uh, if you remember, if you look back further back on the brush, that's the bright green. It hasn't been mixed in with the other. And you look out, the, look on the tip of the brush. There's quite a difference there. Let me see if I can mix that in a little bit more. That was just from a little toothpick. A little bitty toothpick. A little paint on it. That's it. I'll write that off. I'm going to get another little toothpick. There's quite a bit more in there. Yeah, it's not even, it's just, you know, it is just really a toothpick. So let me show you how toned down that is. And that looks more like a green you'd see out in the garden. There you go. Don't know if you can tell that much difference. I mean, up here it's still kind of bright. I don't think we got that mixed in so much, but, but uh, oh, even there it's not so much. But um, let me see here. Oh, actually it is. Okay, it's just hard to tell. I'm looking at the I'm looking through the camera, and it's kind of. I wish it would focus a little better. I can see the color. Oh, there we go. There we go. And see that it's way more muted, and it's not like it's you know. And it's just because, you know, it's got that little bit of red in there, and it's just absolutely perfect for what, uh, for toning that green down and making it more, more like something you would see out in nature. Um, well, unless, you know, unless you live in Ireland, um, and that might be where the, the greens are green green, um, you're probably not going to see that kind of green in nature. Although in Ireland, you probably would because their greens are super green over there. The types of plants that grow there and the amount of water they get and just, you know, the soil is good and whatnot. And it makes the, makes the, the plants over there very happy and happy-go-lucky plants over there. So anyway, but yeah, normally, you know, I mean, I, there's a couple greens that I've, that I've bought. You know, even this green, be, you know, I'll, I'll end up using it because, you know, I can tone it down. Um, and uh, that is one. Um, let me see. I'm gonna wipe this brush off here. But that's uh, and, and this this next color is a phthalo green. And the phthalo, you know, yeah, it does kind of. Oh, I was gonna show you guys the difference between this and the turquoise here. That does look kind of turquoise. You see, if I really, if I really, oh, that is a pretty color. Oh, I like that. I think I'm going to use quite a bit of this. I think I'm going to go through that pretty fast. That's a beautiful color. Look at that. That is really pretty. I mean, if you, if you, you know, wet it down a little, let's get a little more water in there. You can see. And you let that, you let the white from the paper come through. I mean, look at that. You know, it is, that's beautiful. Look at that turquoisey color. And that's the Zella Green. There we go. That's a really pretty color. Oh, I like that a lot. That will play well with the other stuff. I do believe we'll have to see. But uh, I really like that. That's that is that phthalo green. It's you know it's, it's like a bluish green. And I'm actually gonna leave the brush marks a little bit where the paint's like super duper thin over that, so I can really see what that is. And you know when we do the mixing. Um, and one of the things we're going to mix everything with is going to be white. So, um, so that's, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll paint it in a little more. But, uh, that is a really beautiful color. And, you know, phthalos just, you know, the phthalos are very strong, though. I mean, in general. You just got to watch when you're mixing them. Like, if you're, you know, if you're going to try to tone something down and just put, like, a toothpick away, use it. Use a tenth of a toothpick bowl if you're, if you're doing it with a phthalo because phthalos are very, very strongly dyed or pigmented or whatever, and they're, they're, um, they will absolutely, uh, um, you know, when you're mixing them with colors, they'll overpower the other colors really easily. And I'm just going to keep doing my little, uh, you know, take my extra, take my extra paint and stick it on a doily here. Actually, this is kind of, Starting to look like something here. I'm not sure what yet, but uh, here we go. But uh, yeah, see, even if you can see that, even where it, it hit that yellow a little bit, that's still a little wet. And you know, the yellow lightened it up, but it's still pretty strong. I mean, it's it's a strong color. I mean, this this is not as strong as like some of the phthalo blues I played with before. But um, 
No, I'm, I'm kind of thinking this is like a student brain paint, and it seems like it is. Um, I don't know what they call it at Arteza, but, uh, but I mean, it's a good paint, though. I mean, it, you know, I mean, this, you know, especially something to start out with, but you can use this for, you know, for, you know, putting something even on the wall and whatever, you know, it's, that's what it's there for. I'm going to put like a, here, like a circle or something here. There we go. And I'm just playing on here. I'm just kind of goofing off and, you know, it's not, nothing to do. And, you know, dry brushing over that. So there's like a rose pattern there. I don't know if you can see how there's a rose pattern there. And whatnot. I just want to use that here. And, you know, sometimes just, you know, going over some stuff like this. It's just kind of fun. And, and you know, that way you don't just waste the paint. And, you know, I am going to be going over, you know, this a little bit, you know. I'm going to be, you know, taking these colors out again. Um, you know, and uh, don't really want to make it a super long video. Although I do want to cover what people, you know, what people need to know when you're first looking for paints. Because that's that's one thing a lot of people are really intimidated about. You know, or another another problem that happens too is sometimes people will go out and they'll buy paint and then and they'll go get oh I'm gonna get the professional everything and they go buy the stuff and then they sit down and they're terrified to even put the paint on the paper because they're like oh my goodness I just spent like three or four hundred dollars on all this professional stuff and got me an easel and this and that and I'm afraid I'm gonna mess something up you know which kind of defeats the purpose because if you don't try um you're not going to be able to do anything there um you know you gotta you gotta if you're going to make a painting you kind of have to put the paper you know the paint on the paper or the canvas or whatever you know you gotta you gotta start somewhere and unfortunately i mean it sounds silly and a lot of people go oh i'd never do that and then when they do when they go out and spend all that money and stuff that's exactly what they do you know or you know and um I mean, it is, it is kind of funny, but it, it happens to so many people. And they're just like, oh my gosh, I spent all this money on this. I don't want to screw it up. Or here, I'll give it to my friend. Let him or her do it. You know, and it does happen. It really does. So it is something to, to keep in mind um, and whatnot. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. And, you know, I was going to see how this turquoise, I'll just do it on the doily because, I mean, it did get mixed up a little bit with the other thing there, but be interesting to see how on this do we see how this the I mean that other is a okay that's the thalo green there and this is the thalo turquoise of the golden brand and I'm curious how close these colors are and I do think the thalo turquoise I think it has a little bit more um here we go I'll just I'll just do a little bit and kind of dry brush a little bit on here I mean, yeah, see how pigmented that is? It's like I just barely touch it, and it is, like, almost black. There's so much in there. I'm going to have to hit it with some water, maybe even some white, just to be able to see it. But, yeah, see, I hit it. I mean, I just I put a lot of water in there, too, and look at that. Yeah, that is bluer. Yeah, see that? I mean, it almost looks black on on, uh, on my phone um, and on the, on the camera. So it's like, wow, it is. Yeah. There's, yeah, this is really heavy, heavily pigmented though, and I know that I love, I love this for that. Um, but when I use it, I really have to add a lot of white to this. It goes very far because that's just how dark it is. I mean, you know, like I can even, I'll even dip, you see there's a, there's a little bit of paint on there. I'm even going to, I'll dip that in some water right now. And let's see, I mean, there's a lot of water in that brush. And let's see, I can take it out and just show you guys what it looks like. Nice color to have, but I mean, there's that oceany kind of color, and that's got a lot, a lot, a lot of water in it, you know. So, uh, I mean, a lot, a lot. You know, if I painted it like you know, like I did the the Thalo green, the Arteza stuff, it would just be black, but then it's golden and it's you know, top of line paint, too. So, but that, if that gives you an idea, but see, it does go further though, so it's something to think about when you're gonna go buy some paints, is um. You know, I mean, you could go get 50 cent paint at uh, Kmart and start with that. And it works. And it paints. It doesn't mean just like the others, but it does paint. And it works. And it's something you can do if you want to get started. And, you know, if you don't have a lot of money or you're not sure if you want to take up painting. And you're like, well, I don't know, but I kind of want to try it. And what the heck. Um, it's a good idea to, to, you know, give yourself a little bit of 
a little bit of leeway there and uh, see exactly, um, you know, and don't spend a fortune on something you're not sure if you want to do it or not. Um, because I'm going to have to rinse this water, that phthalo kind of killed the water there as far as it being a rinsable object. Oh, and while I'm on it, let's talk about paint brushes. Okay, this brush here, where it's chopped flat across, so this one's kind of bent. This is kind of an older brush, and it's been well loved, well used, and grandkids and the whole nine playing with them. This is a flat, and although it should be like flatter uh, than it is, it's kind of bent, what else is left in water, and this and that. Cause that's what kids do, and sometimes I'm guilty of it too. But uh, these are that's a flat. This is a flat. That's a flat too, yeah, that's a flat there. Okay, and then there's, there is another tie brush. I mean, I already used them, let me see, what was I using here? Oh, that's a flat, I think I'm using all flats, but um, when you have, um, let me see if I've got, okay, okay, well this is called a round here. This one here, it's round, it's not round like a, a, um, it's not round like a, uh, a watercolor round brush. Watercolor round brush, you can get it wet. You can pull those up and make a point out of it. This one you cannot. But these are, these are fairly inexpensive brushes too. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's, this is one, okay. This is, this, okay, this one here, that's the flat. Although it's kind of, this is kind of beat up brush. This one where it's cut on the edge here and there is kind of rounded up, that's called a filbert. And there's also one that's got a, po a point on the end. And that, and I don't have one here right now in front of me, but the, the one with the point is called a ta yeah, cat's time. So like these two are flat, this, you know, these, these are my, these are my kind of beat up student -y brushes here. So, um, and, and then this brush here, you know, this is, you know, this brush and this other one here, you know, unless you're doing really big paintings, you're probably not going to use something that big and around like that. Um, this one here is not for just regular, I mean, it's for acrylics, but it's not for like painting on canvas. See how chopped off and flat that is? That is for stenciling. So you just dab, dab, dab and go over your stencils and you can make a stencil beside. But if you're going to paint paintings, you're not going to want to get a stencil brush to paint on canvas with because it will not work for you very well. Although, you know, that's kind of the general consensus, but um, it, I guess, it, I guess you know, for me, because I like to do all kinds of experimental things and whatnot, I tend to go, well, who knows, you know, maybe I want to use it for some, you know, some other thing or something, and maybe I would. But, um, you know, sometimes I like to kind of break the rules and go, oh, well, it works for this. <laughs> but uh, anyway, this this blue here, this is the ultramarine. I got probably a little too much water in there right now. But when you put more water in your paint, when you're, you know, there's more water in your brush with acrylics, it does help to, you know, it helps the paint like flatten down a little bit more. You know, the one thing I noticed too is, you know, this doesn't, the paint, this Arteza paint doesn't totally seem to be, you know, it seems to be a little more like the consistency of a craft paint, which is like a medium body paint. It doesn't seem to be as hard and as, as um, rigid as, those, I don't know, there's sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, I guess it depends on which color paint you're, you're doing here. So it seems like there's something going on with that. But, uh, I did get quite a bit of water on that one. <laughs> I'm gonna need a bit more paint. I'm gonna just get a little bit on there. Uh, and this is a clean brush. I wouldn't do that if it weren't a, if it weren't a clean brush. So it's not adding more colors on it. But uh, here we go. I'm just kind of dabbing around here. I'm not getting too ground. It's like yeah, yeah. Let's play with it. There we go. Alrighty. And that's your that ultramarine blue. And that, you know, and it's interesting when you start painting oceans, if you do paint oceans, if you ever decide to, um, different parts of the world, you know, I used to teach scuba classes and whatnot, and there's different parts of the world, they have very different colors of ocean. And um, a lot of people go, oh, it's the ocean, you know, how can the colors be different? Well, 
they are different minerals, different different wildlife lives there, breaks down, whatnot, and you have different colors and stuff. So it is what it is. So um, this is the old This is okay. This is the sallow blue. This is another really really strong, strong, strong blue. And uh, I'm kind of surprised they put both the ultramarine and the sal on here. I mean, the sal is kind of a purplish blue, kind of. Yeah, here we go. See, that's the sal right there. You can see how strongly pigmented that is. It just goes over that black like it's nice. And the other one didn't so much. The ultramarine didn't so much. But this sal blue is just, you know, it really really snarkered that off. It just took it off like it was nothing. Took that black line and made it disappear. So here we go. Yeah, another kind of brush you're gonna want to get, like for doing little corners like this and whatnot, is called an angle brush. And it's kind of like having a flat brush. And it's chopped off at an angle. Let me see if, can see if I can. Let me see. It's kind of like chopping it off, like kind of like that. I mean, you've got, and it's wonderful. Those are wonderful on the cat's tongue ones, like that are like the filbert with a point on it. Those are really wonderful because you can make really sharp. Um, well, I don't want to get my arm in that, but you can make really super sharp, uh, you know, like edges and corners and whatnot with that. It's really, they're really nice brushes to have. I mean, it's good to have those. And do you absolutely have to have them? Yeah, yeah, you don't have to. I mean, you can paint with your fingers if you want, but you know, it's you know, what do you what do you really want to do? You know, I guess that's the thing. What do you want to do? And do you want it easy? Do you want it hard? Um, you know, um, but uh, I think a good thing to do as far as brushes is concerned, you know, don't spend a fortune on brushes unless you really get into it and you really like it. And when you you know, um, although. Like if like for watercolors, you definitely want to spend some money on brushes. Uh, watercolors are a different beast, totally. And um, I don't know, there's too many watercolors. So you know, and just about everybody I think that's ever watercolored can tell you. And you know, the brush is a big deal. And some people think that the, think the uh, and then there's different preferences. Some people seem to think that the uh, that the natural brushes, uh, like the sable and whatnot, are are like to, you know, hold too much water and they're too hard to control, but that's what I learned on and I love those. You know, I have a hard time with the brushes that aren't that thirsty, you know, with watercolors. So it's kind of, a, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff becomes like a personal preference thing or whatnot, but um, I toss that one in there because that one's going to not be, that one is not going to be easy to, uh, you know, to, and I'm going to use clean brushes because you're going to the reds next. Let's see here. And that's a filbert there. Let's see if you can see that. See how it's rounded off? It's around there. It's up around there. Kind of like the end of a popsicle stick, I guess is a good way to put it. But that's called a filbert. And when you buy brushes, I think I put it in the description. I think I'm sure I did. Um, you know, you're going to want probably a 2, a 4, and an 8, or a 4, 6, and 8 um, filbert, a 4, 6, and 8, you know, the round ones like this, and you're going to want a 4, 6, and 8 um, flat, like like this, although this one's pretty beat up. I have some that have really nice sharp corners and whatnot, but that's not one of them, and I think one of them's in the water right now, too. But, um, and then you're going to want a brush to, like, for... Uh, like this, for, you know, this is an inch, I believe. You know, this is a hockey brush, and these are nice brushes. I, I use these for encaustics. The, the uh, when you're painting with wax, with uh, pigmented wax, um, they're very nice for that, and they're also good for doing washes on, you know, um, like like for putting gesso on the. Uh, on canvas before you paint and whatnot and and I know uh, canvases do come pre-gessoed it's not an absolute requirement to have just you know go out and buy some gesso but it's a good idea I mean I, I think that's something that I would recommend to let everybody have and especially because you can you know you can even take gesso and you, know, you definitely want your paint to stick uh, that's what it's really made for is so it'll, st it'll stick to the surface that you're trying to get it on but um, uh, gesso is a um, 
you can also color it and you know, all kinds of things. And I really shouldn't be using a filbert for this. This is not the right brush for this at all. But I am just trying to get the new brushes. I think they're, you know, they're all kind of due for a good washing and whatnot. So after this, I'm going to put them in some soap. And what I do is I just get a, a bar of that, that uh, really inexpensive naphtha soap. Naphtha, naphtha soap, I think they call it. Um, and there's pink soaps you can buy and whatnot. Um, there's, you know, different soaps for conditioning. If you go out and, and get the expensive brushes, I'd recommend the conditioners. Um, um, but I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I mean, do I? Yeah, I kind of do. I kind of don't. I mean, there's part of me that says, well, you know, I had brushes that lasted me a really long time and I'm literally, I mean, with a lot of hunting, a lot of painting under, under their belt and whatnot, uh, some of those brushes that I bought, you know, uh, 40 years ago are still good to this day. Uh, a couple of them are. Um, they've got a lot of wear and tear. Um, but I mean, I always, I always took very good care of my brushes, though. I mean, you know, they weren't cheap when I bought them, you know, and I just, I just kind of knew, like, wow, you know, <laughs> I don't want to be spending crudeless of my money on just brushes and whatnot. So, um, you know, when I, when I got my brushes, you know, thankfully I had a, a an instructor that, that really impressed on me that, yeah, not only are they expensive, but, yeah, take good care of them or they will fall apart. And I, gosh, I mean, I've, I've bought brushes, like, for years and I've gone through many, many brushes, but... When I got, uh, when I actually spent some money when I was younger and got uh, some really nice brushes, that's, that is what I used. I used, uh, I used those and I took good care of them and um, I still have them, you know, uh, some of them. Some of them, have, you know, gone and, you know, I think one time, you know, a few years ago I had one that, uh, I had one that uh, I think I forgot to put it in water or something in a long time ago, I guess. And, um, and I, uh, I wound up, um, I wound up, uh, thinking that it was a gone brush, but part of the brush didn't have paint on it. I guess, I, just, I mean, I rinsed it off. I just didn't rinse. I was in a hurry and stuff happens. And I put the brush in some water. It, it didn't, you know, I guess, it, you know, I, maybe I thought it was clean and, you know, it wasn't, and I just put it up, you know, and, and where I keep my brushes, you know, to dry and whatnot. And it turned out it was not. I thought, oh my God, my brush, and, and I didn't know any better, and part of it looked like it was still flexible and whatnot, so I, you know, the rest of it was hard as a rock, and I took the brush, and I thought, well, the heck with it, it's gone anyway, because I didn't, I didn't know you could actually, you know, Try to get the bugs out of there, but I um, I uh, put it. You know, I just I just cut it. You know, I just cut the cut the hard bad parts out and kept painting with it. You know, until it was no more. But uh, I mean, you can paint with Q-tips too. I know some people that do. They paint with Q-tips because it's uh, it works for them. You know, so it's. Uh, and there's people that paint with their fingers, people that paint with their toes, you know, whatever it's, it is, um, hopefully it's, uh, you know, I, you know, it's, it's something, I mean, you learn like, like easier, like, like this brush here is, is probably the perfect brush to do this, you know, this painting of these squares right now. And I've been using round ones and just whatever. I mean, I'm just, I, I just knew it's like, yeah, I'm going to be cruising through brushes here. But of all the brushes that I use to do all these, this one and a couple of the other of the other flats, I and mean, this is this is the right size. And one thing's interesting about brush sizes, like this one here is a size five. Yeah, I think you, yeah, you can see that there. This is a size five here. Um, but you can look at other brushes, and they're not even close to size wise. Um, let me see if this is one. Like this is a six here. Look how huge that is compared to the other one. I mean, this thing is massive. But is it, you know, that's just, or maybe this is an, oh, I think that's a nine. Oh, well, okay, that's probably not a good example. But uh, there is no, oh no, no, I don't know. I'm not sure. But there's, there's like no really good standard for all that. Um, 
Yeah, you know, there's no standard brush sizing thing or whatever. You think they would be? You think they do it by millimeters or something, or something along those lines. Anyway, but they don't. They absolutely do not. And some companies, even within their own company, they have stuff that's they have. Uh, you know, they have stuff. You know, brush sizes that aren't that aren't uh, that don't make sense. So, um, so when I say you know, get a two, a four, and a six. Um, you know, like for instance, here's a two, there's a four, let me see, where's the other one, let's see, oh, that's the wrong one, I'm, I'm looking in my, my water thing here to see, oh, that's good, that's a five, that one makes sense with those, okay, so that's, that makes sense with these, this one probably will not, no, that one goes too, I guess. Huh. I don't know, these seem to be pretty much in step with each other, I think. This one maybe not. Oh no, this one's a two. Oh, here you go. Here's a good example. Okay. These two brushes here are both size twos. Um, it doesn't show up that well. But this one is definitely skinnier than this. Like, I mean, this one's a little splayed out or whatever, because um, it's just a cheaper brush. It's a different type of bristle. But um, I think this is. Uh, oh, this is this is deer. That's deer 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 fur. And this one's uh, this is uh, pig pig stuff. But um, you know, I mean, and and that's not a terribly great example, but. Uh, but there's some huge differences in burst sizes. In fact, I stumbled across one tonight that said it was a size eight, and it looked like these size twos. I mean, it just—it's just what it is. But uh, anyway, well, there's the first part of of our thing. I turned out I didn't have these, so that wasn't an issue. And I need to do the black still too. That's what I need to do. I'm gonna do the black here. Um, and I know I mentioned it before about blacks, but. Uh, you know, black as far as a color that comes out of there. I mean, there's probably something on the planet that has that particular black color. But if you're painting and you need, you know, like black, like say there's a, you know, you get on a forest and you got black shade or whatever, it looks black or whatever. There's always other colors on there. I mean, there's blacks that look bluish. There's blacks that, uh, you know, there's different types of blacks out there. And the best thing to do is to make your own with the colors you've got because you know when you look at things in real life there are reflections and whatnot and it's um you know, i'm just gonna try to put this one out real quick here i'll just get it dip dip i've been kind of going slow but I'm, I'm trying to talk through these things too but um you know when you, when you you know i mean this came with a kit so okay i've got a black or whatever um uh, but you know if you do use black don't just use it by itself i mean definitely unless you're doing an academic abstract or something like that or um you know something like that but um you know if, if you're going to use black like say in a nature scene or whatnot you know definitely add colors from around and surrounding where that black is located in your picture because what you're going to find is that even in the low light situations that seem to be black there's always this reflection going on from colors around it and it may look black black to you but to everybody else it's not going to look black okay well there's the beginnings of a chart this is just the basic these are what these colors look like on paper and i kind of got some green on on this hair but um that's yeah, okay but uh i wonder if that's still wet i don't think it is i think i left it i didn't really catch it okay. that's okay that's fine at least you know at least i know what they look like um you know and using the different brushes and whatnot and if you really look i mean you can almost tell which brushes like the ones where i have a lot of dabbling and this kind of stuff that was probably uh filbert or the rounded in brushes and where it's nice and square and looks neat, I mean, like here and here and there. And I've got a ton of different brushes in here, but you can kind of tell um, in like the the edges, like the real flat, the real flat straight ones are, are more the the flat brushes. And that's the kind of things that you want them for. Whereas like a filbert, that's a good one for like doing flower petals if you're doing flowers. Um, 
you know, for getting the ends of rounded leaves or anything that's rounded, you know, because um, they're really going to be hard pressed with the square brush to get a round shape out of it unless you're using like the, the edge of it, which you can do. Um, but, it, you know, it is nice to have the proper tools so you can, you know, dip in there and go. So, uh, anyway, but this is a, this is a basic chart here. Um, and that's just the colors. And I think what I'll do next, because I know this video is getting pretty long. Um, you know, I just wanted to uh, kind of, you know, hop, skip, and jump of, you know, what you're going to need if you're going to follow the process. And, um, and then, you know, I'll, I'll start doing some, some of the mixes with white, which is what this is with the next, you know, I'm going to start, you know, down here. And I, I'll show you in a second. And, you know, I'll basically divide this up into two columns and then mix that with white and mix each color with white and do that over. And then start on the next page and then start mixing, like, the, you know, the blues with the reds and, you know, the blue with the red, the red with the red with the yellow and whatnot. And see how those play together. Because, you know, there are some important mixes there. Um, but just to go over it again, as far as the colors that you're going to want, um, and you have some reading off of, of some notes here, um, you're going to need titanium white. You're going to need uh, two of it's like two or three times as big as the other ones. Usually, you know, twice as big is good. Um, you know, if you get, you know, if you get four ounce paints, um, you don't paint a lot, it's going to take you a while to get through those. Uh, if you get the two ounce professionals or even just two ounce uh, craft paints, you're going to cruise through them fairly, fairly rapidly. So you're going to want to get titanium white, and I do know for a fact they make titanium white uh, craft paint because I have some. No, this looks pretty neat. But you're definitely, you know, and, and titanium white's a staple. You're going to need that. So I definitely want some titanium white. And, you know, two or three times is, is you know, more than the others, especially if you're buying small amounts. If, you, if you're, if you get a kit like this uh, Arteza kit that I just, like, Arteza, Arteza, whatever kit that I just bought, um, you know, if, you, if you're getting something like this where it's already in there and you got, you know, four ounces of each one, don't worry about it, you know, but just kind of keep an eye on it when you start, you know, getting, getting down there in your titanium white. Yeah, you're probably going to want to get some. But to need any white, you're definitely going to need uh, burn ember. Um, you're definitely going to want a burn ember. And that's that's this color here. Um, and I think, oh, this is the burnt, uh, burnt sienna, I believe. Yeah, that's burnt, yeah, this one's, you know, this one you're going to need. Uh, this is a burnt sienna. I'd strongly recommend the raw sienna. The raw sienna looks kind of like a cross between the tan and this in this yellow ochre so you need the yellow ochre um this one's called like a lemon yellow or something i think so it's it's not like the cadmium yellow um but you know it looks fairly close you know i can show you what a cad yellow looks like well there's a primary yellow and that's and there's a handsome yellow i don't know if i have yeah okay here's this one says medium yellow, which is, I mean, the mediums look kind of almost more orangey, but then you start mixing them with stuff and they look, they look more yellow real quick. Here, let me jot this out here real quick. So this is a medium yellow. Let's see if you can see that. I'm not sure if you can or not. Let's see. But, uh, well, any, oh, you can see it on the lid there, I think. Let me see if you can see that. That is a medium yellow, and that's that looks about like a cad yellow. Uh, if it doesn't come through on the camera, there's not a lot I can do about that. But... Uh, that is really what, uh, yeah, it almost looks greenish. Well, that's weird. But, um, let's see if I can get it closer. Yeah, it's kind of blurry, but you can actually see the color there. Anyway, that's, that's a medium yellow. It kind of has an like orangey tint. It's weird. It looks kind of green in there, but it's not. It is absolutely not. This is, um, that's a primary yellow. Even that looks kind of green on the, on the camera. I don't know why, but, uh. Anyway, if you go to your store and you and you see it or not, that's a good thing. You know, you'll see what these colors look like. And this is a Hansi yellow, and that's actually pretty close to that, too. That one actually looks better, I guess, reflective-wise. Oh, there we go. It looks like it's getting better light there. But uh, that's about... Here, let me see if I can turn this other one that way. You can see... There you go. There we go. I guess that's just the way the light was sitting in here. But see, that's a primary yellow. Um... So, um, anyway, that, uh, that's about what that looks like. That's the brighter yellow, or, you know, that, or, you know, one of those are cadmium yellow. Um, 
And then the yellow ochre, which is this one down here. And I'm going to chart again. Um, so I get like yellow, it's like a cadmium. It's a little bit different from that, a cad medium. Um, cad, cadmium medium, you know, is what you want for that. And you're going to need you know, like a yellow ochre or a yellow oxide. They look so, so similar. Um, you know, I don't know. I never really looked up the pigments, but I've often wondered. Okay, and then the blues you're going to need... Um, you're going to need an ultramarine, which is like this one here. Um, and if, if you have, and some of them say, uh, was it green hue or green shade or something like that? Green shade, I think is what it says. Um, uh, but that's the ultramarine. If you, if you get it and it has like green shade or red shade, get, get the green shade. And that's, that's what you're looking at there. And the cerulean blue is, um, that's different. That's like a sky blue. Kind of looks a little more like that. I don't know, you'll have to look at it at the store and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. And I know the colors aren't coming out real perfect, but that's the sky blue. And then the quinacridone magenta. And that looks real similar to that. And actually to that, but I know that color's not coming out right on the camera either. But, um, well, if, let me see if you can see the difference. If I put them side by side, you might be able to see it. It still doesn't come out right. This is more, this says scarlet red, but that's more like a cadmium red, which is, that is a true cadmium red there. So it's really close. These two are very close. Um, and this crimson red, that's more like a quinacridone. And a quinacridone is more like this red. And these are very different. This is a really, really blue red. This one's got a little bit of blue. This one's got quite a bit of yellow which cadmium does. Cadmium is a yellowed color. So, so hopefully that will help you a little bit. But the best way to do it because computer screens are different and cameras are different and so on and so forth. The best way to do it is to go to your store and actually look at the actual paints themselves. Um, but you can need a quinacridone right into a cad red medium hue or cad red radium if you want to you know, spend the extra bucks. I don't even buy cadmium unless I'm really doing something like, something, you know, like a commission or something, then I might do that. But uh, I do, I, you know, if I if I do something like that, I absolutely will use the real cadmium. But uh, most of the time, I use the cad medium, you know, the cad red medium hue. Um, and then, um, and then there's alternatives like, you know, I mean, titanium white. You got to get titanium white. Burn ember. Got to get burn ember. Burnt sienna, um, you can get instead of the raw sienna, although I think it's good to have both. Um, and there's the primary cyan, primary magenta, cyan's the blue color, and then there's a primary magenta. It's kind of like the quinacridone, although I'm not sure what they use for the quote-unquote primary uh, magentas. I mean, it might be quinacridone, but I would really look for that quinacridone because that, when you start mixing colors, it really can make a big difference. Um, the cad, cadmium red hue, uh, definitely. Uh, primary yellow is another alternative. You know, there's like a primary, you know, they, there's there's different, you know, different companies. Once you look at the professional paints and look at those colors, and the colors, um, like I was here on the golden ones, they've got a, you know, a little thing up top. Um, you know, on the Liquitex, it's down here, you know, towards the bottom, and this is a hooker screen, so give me an idea. Um, so there's, you know, a, a different one to show you, and then, like, the, um, System 3s, um, you know, it, this is like a clear too, which is showing you what the, you know, that's actually showing you the paint, uh, but it also is through plastic. And, you know, some people's brains can wrap around like, oh, this is like, this is a frosty plastic and that you're looking at the paint there too. But uh, do you really, you know, can you really tell what that is? Some people can, some cannot. Some people, you know, they can brain correct for that and go, oh, wait a minute. You know, and then um, I forgot where Grumbacher puts theirs, but on the academies, I think... I think they used to put like a swipe of the paint like across here and maybe that's what that was but I think they do that. Um, there are some paint companies that do. They'll take the actual paint um, and they'll just you know put it on their label even though it says like the name of it and what it is but some of them will actually put a 
put a little, you know, squish of paint on there so that you can see what it is. Actually, on mine, like I showed you the lids on there, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, on the lids of, of my bottles, you know, craft bottles or whatnot, if it doesn't, you know, some of them have a, a sticker on there that show you what, um, and I don't know, it's just some kind of logo thing or something. Uh, although some of these, some of these have, uh, like this one here, this one can be used on glass. This is, this is enamel. This is a true enamel. Um, and they have like glasses for ones that can be used on glass and they have other symbols for things that can be used on them and ones that have symbols that they can be used on anything pretty much. Um, you know, like glass and metal and this, you know, and whatever, you know, but they have a bunch of different things and, you know, I, I've had some really fortunate stuff with, you know, but, uh, yeah, this is folk art too, but it has the black lids, which is one thing. And then you also look at the top. Um, this one is actually an enamel, uh, made apparently for glass. Oh, this is uh, durable acrylic paint by, oh, four ceramics and glass, or glass and ceramics. Top rash, top rack dishwasher safe when cured. So you paint it, I think you let it sit three days, you bake it. And, uh, oh no, it says air dry for 21 days or bake. Oh, or bake, okay. Is air dry for an hour, place in a cool oven, heat it up to 350, bake for 30 minutes, and then remove. Do not use in direct contact with food. So, yeah, you can actually use these on dishes. It's pretty amazing stuff. And then I also have, um, some mediums, uh, we'll, we'll get into the mediums down the road, um, actually maybe the third class, uh, but uh, there's, um, there are mediums that you can actually use with, with, uh, you know, for textiles or clothing, um, and some of those you have to iron, some of them you don't, uh, I kind of tend to prefer the iron on ones because it seems to really, it seems to really, you know, get in there and grab the fibers that are in tends to stay better and not flake off or whatever over time and they don't seem to crack as much, um, or at all, you know, sometimes. Um, so there's, I mean, there's so many different things and then there's, there are some that have, let me see, I'll just take one of these here. Um, well, this is a metallic, a paired metallic and this one has a diamond. And this is uh, all purpose, and I think these are the one. I think the diamond ones. Let me see if I can see that. I think that you know, this is the another folk art. This is a metallic, uh, but the diamond ones, I believe, are the ones that that have um, you know they have little symbols on their stuff. And the diamond on top, I believe, that means it can be used on pretty much anything. Um, don't quote me on that though. Um, ask them if you're not sure. Uh, but it says on the bottles, I think, and then the and this is a true enamel, and the enamels are actually good for glass. And I think you can use it. I think you can use the diamond ones on glass too. Although I'd have to really, if I was going to do something like that, I would absolutely read it beforehand. Um, but it does say it's multi-service, but I don't know if. Um, but I know there's also they also have a medium that is made to mix with regular acrylic paints that, that you can. Uh, where you can uh, paint glass with them. That's pretty pretty amazing stuff. But uh, anyway, so that's the different symbols on there. Um, let me see here. Uh, this is the other one too. Okay, I know there's different symbols on them now. Oh, here we go. Here's a different one. Here's a here's the um, apple red one that has different ones. So um, I believe. The glass, okay, the, the wine glass means it's glass, and the little birdhouse, I think, is wood, and I think the pill means it's metal, too. So, um, yeah, it says, you know, this is multi-service, multi-surface. Um, yeah, this is multi-surface. Uh, it says, oh, yeah, anyway, it's just multi-surface paint, but uh, that's kind of nice to have paints like that. I mean, that's pretty neat. It would be really cool if they had professional paints that had the amount of pigment and the light fastness and stuff that were also multi-service. That would be that would be the cat's meow. I think that would be really nice. But uh, anyway, but to give you an idea, that's that's what you know this other symbol looks like. So there's different types of paints for different things. You know, there's you know there's different different paints for different 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 surfaces and whatnot. And the, most of the multi-surface ones, you can use just about any of them on paper. You know, because it's you know it's not going to be uh, it's not going to generally be bothered or a lot of you know most of them you can use on, on canvas and whatnot too. 
But uh, anyway, so so there's that. Um, and let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm just looking to see if there's anything I had forgotten about. So we got the, oh. Um, oh, I think I mentioned the brushes. You know, you're going to want a 2, 4, and an 8 flat, 2, 4, and an 8 filbert, or thereabouts. I mean, like I said, the there is no quote-unquote standard as far as, uh, as far as brushes are concerned, although, uh, there are different brushes. You know, you just kind of have to go look, and, and if you've never painted before, you know, get some very inexpensive brushes and try them and try doing lines and try painting little corners and just just try doing a 90 degree angle or a 45 degree angle and you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, um, having a liner brush or rigger brush is nice uh, to do, you know, like long lines, square lines, whatever, and fine stuff. Um, it's also, you know, um, one alternative to that, or you can get both, is having an acrylic pen um, you know, the fine tipped ones, uh, they have acrylic paint pens and they are really neat. They actually have acrylic paint pens where you can, you know, made for doing rocks and ones for doing glass and whatnot. And they, they're, they're really neat. Uh, some of them work well, some do not. Definitely read reviews if you're going to buy some, um, or buy them in a place where you can return them if they're not good. Um, but, uh, you know, I've, I've had a couple of them, never had any problem with them. If you don't think they work, usually when you get them, they have a little white tip on there, um, and you have to push it down a few times. You know, like going on a bunch of times, actually, you have to push it over and over again until the paint comes down. You have to shake them up, and then you have to push it down and over and over and over and over and over again, and then, you know, you can finally start to see the paint coming out, and then you got to slow up so it doesn't drip all over, but... Uh, but uh, my experience so far has been really good with that. I'd, I'd, I'd kind of, I'd really strongly suggest you get like a at least a black and a white acrylic you know acrylic fine tip pen or at least this you know maybe not fine or ultra fine or whatever but yeah a small one anyway um i would strongly recommend that i would get a quarter inch or thereabouts and they may be numbered uh some of them just say quarter inch angle brush i would get an angle brush um i know i just it went here a minute ago actually before i started recording uh, let me see if I can find one here. Oh, I think I looked for one a little while ago. Uh, a little while ago. Um, anyway, that's what a typical flat looks like. Although that one's blue, that's because Stello, you know, there's Stello blue painted with that bad boy. So, yep, they turn colors like that. They absolutely get dyed, and I don't care how much washy washy you do to it, it's not going to take that out at all. Okay, oh, I found one. Oh, and I dropped it. Okay, here we go. All right, here is, and of all things, these are like the clear, the clear ones. These are really inexpensive brushes. I think I got these at Michael's or something. This is your, you know, let me see if they numbered it. This is, it says, this is a Lowell Carnell. Um, this is an angle brush. And if I get it wet and actually pull it down, we can see what it looks like. Um... Let me, see. Let me see if you can see that on camera because it's kind of hard to tell what you guys can see or not. Okay, yeah, if I darken up the thing, you can actually see it. But that's, let me see if I put it over that. That's what an angle brush looks like. And see the tip right here on the end? You can really get into some really fine places. This is a favorite brush. My grandson, I think, paints a lot with this one. It gets a lot of use in it. This one's not in great shape, you know, it's been painted with a lot, um, and it is, it is the uh, monofilament stuff, it is not a natural brush, in fact, most of them, like, you know, a lot of the, you know, these ones I've showed you are the, um, these are, um, what do you, you know, what do you call it, the, uh, you know, the hog stuff or whatever, and this is a really good flat. And oh, this does say three quarter inch. Yeah, most of most of the bigger flats, when you start getting into the bigger flats, they'll actually go like three quarter inch or an inch or whatever. And three quarter inch is a really good size. You know, three quarter inch, ten inches. You know, if you're doing, um, you know, nine by twelves, you know, eleven by fourteens, uh, kind of in that range, this is a really good size to have because you can cover a lot of ground with that. You know, for gesso. Um, but you can do it, you know, and more than just just, I mean, you could get a big brush for just one, just, you know, with a bunch on there, but, you know, to have the control to actually do it right and get it in, in the, uh, the canvas and whatnot, I mean, this is a really good brush, but you can also do the, you can also do the, uh, 
I like backgrounds or like skies and whatnot with that. I cover a lot of ground in a big quick hurry with that. So those are really good brushes to have. You know, that, that three quarter or one inch and then having that about a, about a quarter inch angle brush. Um, and I didn't see any size or anything on there, I don't think so. Hard to say, but that's a, that's a good brush to have. Let me see. And what else have we got? Um, okay, let's see. 248 flat, 248 filbert, a liner, a rigger. And you know, I was looking for my rigger, and those brushes, because they have such long, long bristles on them, they tend to get just demolished. And um, I don't know that I even have a rigger right now, but. Uh, Anyway, they're called liner brushes or rigger brushes. Basically, it's it's like a it's like a small round one, but it's got a really you know it's kind of like that, but it's got really you know the bristles are really long. They'll come out you know like way out to here. You know they're really they really have long bristles. But uh, I'm not sure. I think I think my last one's gone. I may have to get me another one. But uh, you know those guys and the little teeny tiny brushes I have, it just you know almost looks like it's got about you know 15 hairs in there. Uh, those tend to disappear pretty quick. Um, you know, and then keep in mind too that the brushes brush sizes are not standard at all. Um, like uh, there's a place uh, I'll have to see if I can get a link to them, but I know there's a couple of places that have, are working to try to get things standardized, but we'll have to see what happens from there. Uh, other stuff you're going to need, um, like a cup of water. I think I went over that. I used, you know, like I said, I used a cup pretty much like this one. It's got all these brushes in here. I used, had one going for about 10 years. It's pretty nice. To, and then you can throw it in the recycle bin when it cracks or breaks or whatever like I did. Um, one thing you might notice in my cup here is that my water level is super, super low. Well, what you, you know, what you don't want, you don't want water getting up into here. Because uh, if you get water up in there, it, will, it can crack your, the wood on your brushes. And, um, you know, I mean, your water's going to get dirtier because there's, you know, dirtier quicker because there's less of it in there. And that water's pretty funky looking right now. But um, you definitely, you don't want to let water get up. Up, you know, behind the ferrules because it will which is the metal part on the brush that holds the bristles in uh, that and some glue too but uh, you don't want water getting up in there because it's, it can absolutely crack your crack your handles and break your brush and whatnot it's no fun just buying you know buying good brushes is really you know can be an inexpensive ordeal so you know it's good to just take care of what you got um, let me see, so, um, you'll need a cup of water, you'll need water, and, yeah, please don't put them below, you know, keep it below the ferrules, um, you know, it's okay to have it, like, on the metal part, like, down where the brush, bristles are, which it has to, uh, but just don't get it, like, where it's going up above the, the ferrules, and you can kind of judge, like, how much wood space is in there, you know, by taking a look at it, and you definitely want that taken care of, um, Let's see. Um, oh, I was going to talk about palettes. I mean, well, I talked a little bit about them. I think I already covered that with the, you know, the uh, Paint Keeper palettes. Uh, they're nice, but, yeah, just use, you know, if you feel like you need to buy anything, go get a ceramic plate from a thrift store or see if your neighbor's got one out in the garage. It's, you know, as long as it's white, you know, because if you look at it, you're like, oh, wow, you know, and it's, you can see what your paints really look like, you know, against white. But if you're, you're painting on something black, you know, you may want a black one, you know, um, to see what it's, you know, get an idea what it's going to look like when the paint dries and whatnot. So it's, you know. Um, but I'd start out with a white one because most people are whiting, or painting on canvas and most canvas has white gesso on it and, and whatnot. So that's a good thing. Uh, let's see here. Um, and I showed you the paper. Again, the paper that I'm using is a Canson Mixed Media 98 pound paper. I really like this. Um, I would use this for your church. You can even paint on this. I mean, I've painted some, some pretty good stuff on this paper. It's for mixed media. It's it's really kind of nice paper. Um, there's also like Strathmore is a good brand. Um, you know you can you can just go to your local art store. Just make sure you got a heavy paper where it's not going to be soaking through. Like I said, this one's 98 pounds. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, there's 90. There's 98 pound paper. 
Uh, let's see what else. Um, a ruler. You know, I've got this ruler. I probably had this one for, I don't know, a long time. I don't I couldn't even tell you. It's probably 20 years old, I guess. And it's got little chips and this and that. And it. it's, it's been around for a little bit. So, but, you know, get yourself a, a ruler, a T-square. Nice thing to have is a T-square. I don't have mine here, but uh, you can get them at the craft store for about four or five bucks, maybe six bucks. Um, and basically you just put it against against your paper and it's, you know, it will do like an absolute perfect 90 degree angle. If you're going to be painting or, you know, or even drawing houses, any kind of buildings, anything with straight edges that are 90 degree angles, get a T-square. It will make your life a lot, a lot easier. You're gonna need a pencil. I kind of tend to like the three H's. This is when I got us some little drawing kit that, you know, they have for kids or whatever. Um, this is the Royal 3H. Um, you know, I like something with a little bit of softer lead so it's a little bit darker so I can see um, a little easier. Uh, and and then you're gonna to wanna to get some chalk. And nothing fancy, just, you know, get like a stick of chalk from, uh, from uh, you know, the uh, same kind of stuff, you know, when they have the back to school sales, it's a good time to pick the, that up. Um, and if you need this time of year, you know, just go to like a office supply or Kmart or whatever and go get, you know, or, or wherever and just go get a piece of chalk. Um, if you do want to get fancy, um, I would get a light blue dressmaker's chalk. And they have that in the sewing departments. Uh, if you're really going to get serious and really be, you know, uh, needs needs some markings to really get it, you know, your drawing or the base of your drawing down good to, to do some painting. Um, use dressmaker's chalk and use light blue because for one, it will disappear easier. For two, if you have to take photocopies, if you're, you know, if you're um, doing that kind of stuff, it will not show up if someone tries to copy it or if you try to copy it. And But then if you want to co if you want it to show up, you can go over it with a pencil and whatnot. And you can do that right on the canvas. It's not a big thing, but you got to, you know, um, you need to be a little careful using like graphite and whatnot because of that. But uh, anyway, um, well, my battery is getting low here. And we've, I've been on for about two and a half hours. And I think for first class, I think that's pretty good. Um, but what I'd like you to do is, is go look at the paints. Uh, maybe even go get yourself a set of paints. Like I said, the Artesis shit set. I mean, that's that's perfect to start. You know, it's a good, good starter kit. Um, you know, the main thing is you want to have your titanium white, you want the two reds, two blues, two yellows, and then you want your burnt sienna and, and burnt umber, and, you know, possibly raw umber, you know, burnt sienna and raw umber, or burnt sienna, you know, burnt umber. And you want an umber and a sienna, you want both. Um, and then, uh, if you could make a chart, you know, um, get yourself a book like this to, to do your charts in. You might want to if you want to do your paintings separately. It is kind of nice to keep your charts separate because then you can have, you have a place to look at it. I, I have a book of just charts and it's in that, you know, so if I want to know like, oh, I wonder if I can do this or if I wonder if this paint or this medium can do this or do that, I can go into those books and I can look and go, oh, wow, I tried this here and it didn't work or I tried this and yes, it works, that's good. So yes, I can do that when an idea comes up. Um, so um, go out and get yourself some paints and then make yourself a chart. Now you're going to end up with about 12 to 15 paints. You know, you might think about getting like, you know, if you're going to want to do ocean stuff, you might think about the phthalo turquoise or something similar. Um, I like those paint and golden, you know, I'm really happy with golden stuff. I just wish they would change their, their caps on their, lid, on their lids on their tubes. That would be really nice. And, you know, maybe Liquitex has a special deal with that. Um, but, uh, you know, like that color is good. And another thing, if you're going to do ocean, is you want that, uh, you know, that transparent white or um, I think it's called transfer white. I mean, there's, there's a number of different names for it, but it's more of a transparent white. Uh, you're going to want that too for ocean stuff. If you're going to do a lot of of um, uh, trees and whatnot, you might want to invest in a green. I mean, you can always mix your greens, and it's not that difficult, you know, a little yellow, a little blue of the right kind, of the right kind, because some don't mix so well. But um, we'll go over that in, in the mixing thing and charts and whatnot. Um, but uh, anyway, go out and get yourself some paints, get yourself some brushes. Um, and I also put it in the description below where you can get your brushes. Uh, 
So um, go get yourself brushes and some paints. Um, you know, you even get some fun, you know, experimental kind of things. If you're into metallics, get some metallics. If you like neon stuff, get some neon stuff. Because we're going to be playing with all sorts of things in this class. And, and, um, and it'll be fun to see what you guys have out there. Um, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be setting up a place where you can upload that. But we're just getting the, this ball started, so um, that's something that uh, I'll, I'll announce at the, in the next class meeting. So, uh, anyhow, um, I guess that's about it. Go get yourself some paints. Get yourself get yourself your your book. Make your chart, and um, I can show it to you. Ah, it's just, yeah. I think my oh, there we go. You know, make yourself your chart, and uh, and um, let's get this let's get this class going. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, put them in the, in the uh, comments section below. And we will probably see you next next week, if not sooner. I may get on sooner, but uh, I definitely want to check in and see, you know, if people have questions or whatnot. And if there's if there's quite a few questions and about the similar, same or similar things, I may just make a short video answering questions, which for me is a lot easier than than to do so. I'd rather show you and talk about it than to just you know, try to tell you and let you figure it out. Um, so I think I'm I think we're probably gonna look at doing Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Uh, uh, so we'll have to see how that works and I might do a Tuesday Thursday at 10 a.m. because uh, it doesn't seem to be in you know anything that kind of totally overlaps with anybody else. Um, but if you, if you want to hang out and you want to do this class and, and um, you know, learn some drawing techniques and some painting techniques and whatnot, um, let me know what works for you. Um, I would like, I'd like to hear from you guys. Uh, so I think that's about it. Well, go get yourself some paints. Get yourself a, a, a book to do your paint stuff in. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can Because it's acrylic paint, you can even do it on, you know, like you could even get a composition book and literally paint your charts in there on line paper it doesn't matter but it, the good thing you know the thing is you really want to have a chart where you can go back later and say aha that's what i did with this paint and i, I was going to do some color mixing this time i think we're going to save color mixing for next time because i think uh, i think my battery is just about gone um but uh and i don't want to change it and there's other there's other stuff i gotta do Anyway, and it's, uh, so, uh, let's see, so, um, and I'm going to be working on, like, an intro and whatnot for, for the videos, and, and I'm going to try to make it so I upload them, and it'll give you time, you know, um, you know, it'll give you, like, a, a warning ahead of time, um, you know, maybe an hour or two ahead of time to let people know that, that things are coming on, so anyhow, um, let me know what you think, um, it's, uh, it's been kind of fun to put this together, and I'm learning how to do the video stuff as we speak. And like I said, the lighting is like, eh, you know, I got all that going on. But uh, I'm going to be working on that, try to try to make that better, because um, that part I am learning. Um, and you know, you I always learn art stuff from other people on you know on YouTube and whatnot, and other you know books and whatnot too. And you're always learning new stuff. And it's fun to teach stuff. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this because I really like I really like to do it, and it's fun. And I like the chemistry part of it and how things mix and don't mix, and and uh, you know things that aren't supposed to mix well. Then you do them and you find a way to make it work right and you know work real well for what you want to do and whatnot. And I love that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, I th you know thanks for coming, and I hope to see you at the studio um, either you know Thursday or next Tuesday. Um, so, uh, you know, add your comments down below, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, all that stuff. So you, you know, you get notified hopefully, and you know, if you do, you know, notification things have been a little screwy from what I understand from others and even from videos that I watch. Um, so I hope to see you guys next time. Um, bye for now.